Hey y'all, it's Horse Thief. I wanted to add a little context to what you are about to see in this video. Today I'm bringing you something special, something that's actually kind of near and dear to my heart. We had this situation pop up. I got approached by Tim Zaturd, someone who's a regular in Twitch chat, both uh, Yuck's chats and my chats. And so Tim, Tim's around. Tim's Tim's part of the Storybook Brawl community. Approached Yuck and I to put on a tournament. Wanted to, you know, just do something for the community, have a little bit of fun, everybody together. And as that idea and concept grew, we ended up with what you're about to see here: a team-based tournament where Yuck selected two captains, I selected two captains for a total of four team captains each of those team captains then went and assembled a team of four they're self-included and then what we have here is a format now where it's a lot of information being shared you and your teammate will be in every single lobby so each lobby eight players the, the two players per team in each lobby to make up the eight players so that means that every single round you if you're not fighting your teammate you'll be fighting someone else and your teammate will be fighting someone else at any point in the game, most of the time, you have half of the information that's available in the game. You know your board state, your teammate's board state, your last opponent's board state, your teammate's last opponent's board state. You know what half of the boards in the game look like. So we went into this not exactly knowing how it was going to play out. And obviously, this is how it played out. It, it, it turned out to be wild, but it was just something that Tim and Yuck and I wanted to bring to you. Uh, Jeebus immediately came to mind and we asked Jeebus and Jeebus hopped right in, was totally excited to come take part in this. We, you know, you'll hear us talking about we saw all sorts of activity, energy, enthusiasm leading up to this. So ultimately... We're really looking forward to this, and I think it was just a real good time. Anyway, kick back, relax, and enjoy. Hello, everyone. I'm not ready. Oh, no, yeah, no. Oh, 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 you're ready? You're ready before the stream starts. Wait up. You caught me off guard. Now. I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Well, hey there. We got a we got something fun brewing today. Uh, I know a lot of y'all. We, I mean, Yuck and I have been talking about this. You're used to seeing me around these parts, but maybe not this face over here. I got uh, Yuck Mouth with me today, and we are bringing you the Super Brawl. Yuck! What is the Super Brawl? Well, it's the first ever team-based event in Storybook Brawl. So we have a total of team four, uh, a total of four team captains. They each chose three other players to play on their team. So we have a total of four teams with four players each. 16 players. Um, and the way this is going to work, I'm going to try to explain it without getting too complicated. But each team is going to have two players in each lobby. So they'll have two of their players playing and two of their players not playing in each lobby. They are allowed to communicate amongst themselves between the players in the same lobby. Or if they want to have the players not playing... Uh, in voice chat with them to give advice or feedback. They can do that as well. But this is going to open up some new strategies. And we're going to see how that plays out and develops. I do happen to know that some of these teams have definitely been practicing for this format. And I think the players are certainly excited. I'm excited. And obviously we hope the viewers are as well. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm yucking twice over here? What is going on? Hang on a second. And yuck is a bit quiet. Wait. Yeah, tell me something else. Why? <laughs> uh, well, what, what do you want to talk about now? Oh, yuck, you are. We can talk about uh, the teams, the team names. Oh, the, we can talk about uh, that. No, i tell you what we need to talk about. We need to talk about our special guest we... that we're going to have today. So between games, this is another twist we're going to do on tournament coverage. But between games, we're going to bring Jeebus in with us. Jeebus is going to be watching on his own. And not necessarily from the same perspective that we're watching on stream. And is going to give us some some insights, some thoughts, some, I don't know, some analysis. Whatever we can come up with. But we're going to have Jeebus also help us out today. <laughs> we do we do have a, a sneaky Jeebus in the background already. So, okay, I got you. Yeah, I'm, I've been here the whole time. That's true. <laughs> I, you know, Jeebus, I always have the power to bring you on cam. I hadn't planned on doing this yet, but we could, uh, look at that. There's a Jeebus there. I was always here. So yeah, we Ooh, sneaky. That's a sneaky Jeebus. And I did, uh, I did set this up too. If you ever want to figure out where you can find us all, if you're here, you know where to find me, but if you want to find yuck and Jeebus, you can do the exclamation point super brawl 
let us know who all we're hanging out with here. I so I'm gonna I'm gonna flip us back here, Jeebus. Uh, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put us back to Yuck and me while we set this up. We need to get the first lobby brewing, and I have some instructions. So you're gonna have to bear with us a little bit on some of these because as first time, we're gonna have some stuff that we just you know we do smoother the second time around, but it's not gonna be as smooth this time around necessarily. So what I'm looking for from the various teams, uh, and I guess I'll post this in the Discord at the same time, I'm looking for you all to now go select your two players for game one and then put those names in the game one scores channel. So I'm gonna throw that in my announcements here. Okay. Oh, and <laughs> no, no special rules, Major Death. We have done those before. No special rules here, though. How do I? If I do that, you go away. Yuck! Are you uh, are you still muted on guest star? Uh. Yeah, you are. Um, yeah, should be. Are folks yep. still getting double audio? Test, test. Can anybody tell us if there's double audio from me? Good morning, Yaki. Let's get ready to brawl. Let's get ready to super brawl. Audio's good. Right, audio seems good. Thank you. Okay. Seems when, good. Whenever I hear someone say double audio, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> I think I messed something up. Yeah, we're All right, seems good. We are definitely getting ready to brawl. I am. Hmm. I need to get everybody's attention. Uh if y'all could hop into my stream or check announcements. Yeah, just getting everybody coordinated is, uh, you know, going to take us a couple of minutes here. But once we get going, it should go pretty smoothly. So we're, I mean, they, they're they all checking in. We got most everybody. It looks like uh, Godot may have overslept. <laughs> we're hoping Godot didn't think it was an hour later than it is. But the nice thing about this is we do have some flexibility. So yep. one one cool thing about this is each team, we, we don't, we don't care who plays what game. We're, like Yuck and I, it does not matter to us who is in each individual game. What matters to us is that each of these four players gets to play twice. They have to play twice. Everybody has to play two games. Doesn't matter. You can play game one and two, and that's it. You can play game one and four. You can play, we, we, we don't care how the teams organize it. They're, they're free to navigate their own strategies on this one. So we're looking for just the, the first pairs from each team for game one, getting that set up. Yeah, there could be some strategy there as well. Maybe there's a pair on your team that just seemed to play well together uh, after practicing and, and maybe they just know each other better. Uh, maybe you want to mix it up just to let everybody play with everybody. So there's definitely some strategy there. Um, a, a lot of things that can come out of the team format. Uh, but one thing I want to mention, uh, you know, this is a game that has a, a pretty sizable element of RNG involved. And in a tournament setting, it can always feel bad to, say, get unlucky in one lobby. And, uh, you know, sometimes there's nothing you can do, or at least it feels that way. But it's not as noticeable probably in this team format because you're covering more games right we're only playing four lobbies total unless we need a tiebreaker we'll play a fifth but within each of those lobbies your team is represented twice so that's actually eight total games that are going to be represented for your team so less room for the rng to control things yeah absolutely and it looks like we got all of our pairs have just reported in so i'm gonna keep them moving on creating this lobby here all right, perfect, perfect. Honestly, you know what? It's like I should just bring uh, you and G because it sounds like I'm going to be in organization mode for the next few minutes. Maybe the two of you can speculate while I organize. <laughs> Wait, Jeebus? Jeebus is still here? Jeebus is still I here. I am still here. I've been here the That's whole time. Cool. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I knew Jeebus, but they, maybe they, okay, they know yeah, everybody. Yeah, you know. 
Uh, RG, but so we have talked about how this is a new format. Uh, do you have any thoughts that you want to share going into this about a team format? Yeah, so team format, uh, you know, especially the way that this is set up, is, is going to be really interesting because there's a lot of different potential strategies that you can take. You know, it, it's not about necessarily just the individual game. You know, it is a it is a set of games. Um, so maximizing your points per game is pretty important. Um, you know, and, and that can come in uh, several different forms. That can be something as simple as, um, you know, trying to get you, both your players into, um, just a higher position overall. It can be trying to get one of the people, one of, one of your teammates to win by, you know, feeding them when available, you know, could be sharing information from the, the opponents that you fought given, you know, a little bit of extra knowledge, you know, knowing somebody has a soul attack early or a dragon to try and play around that a little bit. Um, it allows you to do things like leverage Krampus Slay or, you know, even potentially, you know, pigs or XP a little bit better or differently um, because you have at least one opponent in the lobby that you can kind of try to, to softball you a little bit. Um, you know, maybe one of the players is high rolling a little bit more than the other. You end up fighting them as your teammate. You know, you you feed them a really easy, um, maybe a bit of extra gold to the pig or something along those lines, and that could accelerate them even further. Yeah, all great points. Uh, an another thing is the added information that you can gain. When you have a teammate in the lobby, maybe your current opponent was the opponent that your teammate faced just the round prior, and you have a lot more information than, than you would generally have in that situation. Now, along with that comes a bit of information overload, potentially, you know, because each player is still trying to play their own turn and communicate anything they can between each other. So there's going to be a lot going on. It, it's a new element. Uh, we do know some of these players. I don't know if all of them have, but we know some of them have practiced for this. That's true. Uh, but even with the limited amount of practice, it feels like this is going to be a unique experience. Yeah, clock management, I think, is going to end up being quite important for this um if you end up not leveraging your own clock appropriately you know you can end up talking about it a little bit too much you're you're talking about that information overload you know it doesn't take that much when you're you're communicating about a turn for it to slip away from you you know so you have to sort of be able to balance maintaining a, a reasonable pace of play with still getting that extra information yeah, you know, clock management, not my specialty. So luckily, I'm not going to be playing in this tournament. But we can watch along and, and see how this plays out. If we see anybody running out of time on a turn, we can speculate. We won't yeah. actually know, but we can speculate that maybe there's a reason for that. Yeah, it's very possible. You know, it, it's it'll, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how they sort of adapt some of these strategies. Um, I will probably be jumping in between several different players in the spectate just to see sort of how they choose to approach that. You know, if it, if it ends up being very different from what we would, ex would expect between teams, that wouldn't surprise me, you know, even between different players and play styles, um, it, it should be a, a pretty good thing to watch. And if I see any really interesting boards between teammates, I may try to take a screenshot of them. We can, we can potentially share those. I love it. Um, if yeah. not, we we might be able to just talk about them either way. All right, Joel. That's creative. Lobby yeah, one is you ready. Can... They're ready? Okay, let, let me say one last thing here. Please do. Uh, but uh, for anybody joining, this is going to be a team format tournament that we're just about to get started. A lot of you know we've been talking about this. We've been excited for it. We're uh, almost ready. But what I want to say is we have Jeebus joining us. Jeebus is not going to stay in chat with us during this game. But Jeebus is going to have a bit of an opportunity here and a unique perspective. So on stream, it's not easy for us to bounce around between players. It gets to be a bit too much going on. Jeebus behind the scenes can do that and maybe can pick up on some things between teammates uh, or just in general that we don't pick up on. After this first game, we will bring Jeebus back and uh, talk to Jeebus and see what we can uh, decipher after game one. Yeah, looking forward to it. I am too. Thank you, Jeebus. All right, I'm going to flip us uh, over here for just a moment and we will talk to Jeebus again shortly. Uh, let me go ahead and send confirmation. We have Lucas Zazi as the lobby boss, so that's who I'm gonna jump in and spectate for this first game. 
And I'm gonna ask Lucas to go ahead and launch and then I'll hop in and spectate. Uh, and we will try to get in that lobby as quick as we can. The timing of it is pretty tricky. So if we, we may miss Euro Select, hopefully not, but we're gonna do our best. All right. All right, Lucas is launching now. So let me flip us on over to this puff puff background image. This will be the static background image for any time I'm switching between things today. And let me get us into that game. All right. Yuck, we should be ready for spectate. You should see that right now. Yep, I got it. I got the game pulled up. I'm going to flip over to Lucas. Oh, and I'm seeing who all... Okay, and we have a game. We have a Hero Select. Let me share that on stream. All right, perfect. We got in Hero Select. Nice. All right, so we're looking at Merlin, Morgan, the Sphinx, and Ragnarok for Lucas here. Uh, I like Merlin a lot. None of these I'm super happy with. Uh, I don't think Merlin will be the choice. Uh, again, with the team element, I wonder if that factors in even at Hero Select. We are choosing Morgan here, which is a, a solid hero. Um, a hero like every other one that you hope to have a good early game and delay the hero power as long as possible. So we start with a Crafty, a Baby Dragon, and a Mim in the shop. Um, and let's see who the teammate is so we can kind of keep a close eye on that yeah let's take a look at that so we got lucas uh i believe part of godot's squad if i'm not mistaken so that means his teammate is pavlov i believe i believe that's correct yeah 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 that is okay that is the case so that means pavlov is on fates yeah, so actually, is going to be the teammate. maybe we should just do this as a quick announce. Now, obviously, it's interesting that Lucas chose to buy a Mad Mim on turn one when most of the shop wasn't that interesting. But let's before we even get too much into the strategy, let's just take a look at who all is playing what heroes we got. So Icarus is on the Curse King and Icarus is on a team with hang on has known. Is it? Oh, goodness. Sorry. I have to go back to the discord. Icarus here. is on a team with Click. So game one, it's Terathel and has no name. From the same team. So Terathel, this this squad is Terathel on Celestial Tiger, who we're about to see Zazie face off against. And then Has No Name is playing the Trash Panda. So we got Terathel on Tiger, Has No Name on Trash Panda. They make up one duo. Icarus is with Kleck, you're right. So we got Icarus on the Curse King and we got Kleck on the Horde Dragon. Very spicy pair. Yep. We got Tiku Wabu and Otakuyan. Playing together, so Tikuwabu here on Beauty we're about to fight. Uh, Otakuyan, I believe, is this name on Gwen? Yeah, yeah, it has to be. And then our final pair is Lucas Zazi and Pavlov. We're watching Lucas, and we got Pavlov. Yep. Who Who is Pavlov playing? Uh, Fates. Fates, okay. So our teammate right now is Fates. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one we want to watch closer. I like going over it. There's a lot to keep up with for us as well as for the players. Uh, with that being said, we're getting ready to go to level three. There is a Mim in the shop. Looks like thought about locking, maybe deciding not to. It is only locking one character, however, but the spell isn't playable. Maybe if that's a good spell, maybe that's worth a lock. Yeah, it's just one mad Mim. I don't know. It's a tough call, but oh, we almost had a shot to take away the egg and we don't get to take away the egg. We're, this is, it's always tricky with Morgan, right? We're going to have a bit of an interesting early phase because we don't have a hero power until later. But if we can get set up just well enough to play into that hero power, we could end up in a very excellent position. It's just... Another thing I want to mention is we haven't faced our teammate yet. So that means at some point in the next couple of turns, we're likely to face that teammate. So does that factor into any of your decisions? You know, it's not convenient to get the prize pig this turn, but, you know, playing the prize pig... If it's against your opponent and you lose the prize pick, well, that's not all bad, right? So maybe there's a little bit of extra consideration there. Uh, it's not going to make sense here, it looks like. We did pick up a stag, and we have a battle mem. Who doesn't love a good battle mem? I absolutely... <laughs> exclamation, not a bot. Wait, we're in my channel. We could actually exclamation, not a bot here. It's a, You know, sometimes you got to put a support on the front. It makes sense to do it. 
Now, it's okay. interesting. You and Jeebus were talking a little bit about... Oh, we're going to get to see what the poly becomes. We have a Horde Dragon that's looking all right, winning fights. Well, not this one, though. But still, with a upgraded... Po or not upgraded, but a poly flip and a... That seems like a decent spot to be if you're the Horde Dragon, despite the fact that you're lower on the health spectrum right now. We also saw Click play Gingerbread Party that turn, which is solid to take minimal damage and get a poly slay. Has fancy pants already and played a gingerbread party. So, uh, collect off to a pretty good start. We get a treasure here. Bounty board, dark contract, magic runes. These are interesting. Dark contract is great tempo. Magic runes is pretty decent, actually, on this hero. In addition to being able to triple naturally, your hero power potentially gives you a treasure from one level higher if you get below 20 health or at 20 health that way. Um, or Bounty Board can be strong when it works, but it looks like Magic Runes is the choice. We're at 35. It does not appear that we're having that kind of Morgan game where we're going sub 20 on level 3. So I really like this Magic Rune because I think it's looking like the Magic Rune at bare minimum is likely to be at least a level 5 treasure. And I think that's a pretty good... That, that's something I would like, for sure. Yeah. Is a level 5 treasure better? Yeah, I, I like it. We don't have any pairs on board either, which could make this um, complicated because maybe we actually want to complete magic runes through the hero power, depending on how the next upcoming turns go. But if we had something uh, on board that we wanted to pair, well, that could get awkward because maybe you don't want to triple it because of magic runes, but maybe it would be something you actually would want to triple naturally. Um, speaking of pairs, there is a second sure shot in the shop. Um, now, conveniently with magic rune for me, Often, I don't want to turn my threes into fours because threes are yep. just such, you know, it's such a signature treasure point in the game at this moment in time. The threes, you get them early. They often help you decide kind of what angles you want to start taking throughout the game. So I, I don't mind using my magic runes to turn a two into a three. So this triple here is not necessarily unappealing to me. Now, we've opted to skip it because I would say sure shot by itself at a two one stat line. Not that strong right at this moment in time, but we are collecting Ooh. mice, aren't we? Well, we also have to take note, we're playing our teammate this round. Oh. So, uh, we don't have the ability to play that spell for the experience because we already played free roll. But I wonder if we wish we could. Uh, you know, we're also noticing that Lucas is taking more time. And it's probably because they're communicating. It looks like they're trying to figure out how to tie the fight. Uh, it looks like we're going to bench four characters. We're going to play a weak board. Now, I don't know if we're intentionally losing or we're trying to tie. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I think we're going to find out here pretty quick, though. I think for, uh, we, I know we talked about this offline, but for future iterations, uh, were we to do something like this again, I, I think it would be fun to hear what Lucas and Pavlov are saying to each other in that moment. Because, yeah, we do see, and it makes sense, we do see a very weak board. So Lucas purposely positioning to allow Pavlov to get a polyflip. Yeah, but also hoping to get an ogre slay at the same time. Unfortunately, the polyflip blocks the ogre slay. Yeah, the, and we give up experience. Pavlov also played uh, experience, so so got two experience that turn as well as the poly flip. So that's a, a big speed boost there for our teammate. Uh, we took a little bit of a hit for it, but as we talked about with this hero power, you know, we're getting to 22 health. We're just getting closer to the hero power at this point as we pick up Gosling Helm. This is the awkward part, though. So you were you you and Jeebus were talking earlier about some of the prep that we've seen some people do. So some of the folks who both stream and are in this tournament today, uh, they were, they were hopping into the competitive discord servers and they were playing some games with each other, kind of getting ready because it's a bit of a weird format on purpose. Uh, you know, you got to communicate, you got to have these moments where you fight a teammate because ultimately at the end of the day, you want to collect as many points as possible for your team because it's overall team score that wins. And one situation I saw that I found very interesting, I was watching Kleck playing with Duke on Kleck's stream. And they hit a situation where Kleck was really low, was having a really bad early game. Duke was playing Goldilocks, wasn't having the strongest early game, but had, was healthier. They go in, they fight each other, and they've, they've got it set up to, you know, simulate this tournament setting. So they play it in a way where Kleck can survive, but Duke had also had a wish upon a star that turn. Later in the game, Kleck's doing much better because Kleck needed that to kind of like, Kleck finds a way to accelerate and bounce back. But Duke ends up going out of the lobby before Kleck does, and Duke just misses getting to six on Goldie. All because of that plus one XP in a way. So it's very awkward. You have to both plan for the future, but also give yourself both lines to be strong later too. 
Uh, and as we get into this fight, we don't get the stag attack. We do, again, have a different version of a battle mem. This time it's not a front row support, but rather a mem that's catching the Gosling Helm buff. And it's a good thing because that's just enough to tie this fight. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of wild to move. I know it hasn't been... It's it's one of the newer, more recent moves, even though it's not necessarily brand brand new to us. Uh, the move of Ugly Gosling Helm from five to four has made it a very appealing level four treasure to pick very often for me. Plus 10, 10, it's a big stat line. And especially on things like, oftentimes you're just gonna have like a two, two Sporko in the back and it's gonna naturally just land there and you're happy to have a 12, 12. Yeah, it's also interesting to play to try to move your board around because the way you support things matters more when you might want your lowest attack character to be a specific character on your board, like a Poliwoggle, for instance, which synergizes really well with uh, this treasure also. So we're trying to work out what we want to do this turn. I got to wonder what um, Lucas is staring at here. I see the feaster. I know I'm always a sucker for feasting, but it's always a risky yeah. play to feast. Yeah, I, I don't know if the feasting at 22 health in this spot makes enough sense. It, it looks like Lucas agrees and rolls past it. But what are we looking for? We we would love a level 3 pair to, to go treasure hunting a little bit. We do take that. But that doesn't really help our board state. I, I mean, the peep is solid when we have the double support on the back row, the double upgraded support even. But this doesn't feel like a very strong board, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I kind of feel, at least at this moment in time, like we're a little bit in limbo. We're we're close. You know, any any one of these, we get one more peep and we're maybe looking at a treasure map. We, we might have an idea of where we want to go next, but we just, this board right now isn't telling me where it wants to be. These supports luckily are doing a lot to add power to our front line to smooth out some of these combats, but this is a fight where we're just unable to deal with that court wizard yeah i'm not surprised we don't take too much damage unfortunately we do proc the hero power now so we get a level four treasure which is not ideal we're close to five right level five treasures would likely be a lot better in this spot Absolutely. Um, but we do take some damage uh, we have the options of Moonsong Horn, Forking Rod, and Coin of Charon. What do you think? I'm looking at these, you know, Moonsong's Jack of All Trades, Master None, always good, never great, necessarily. Works well with a Crystal Ball, which we don't have. Uh, I liked Forking Rod. Weirdly, though, the one that I was about to... <laughs> the one that I was just... Not exactly trash-talking, but uh, I was ho-hum about Lucas Likes. Makes all your cantrips free. We had a mix of whistle right there in the shop, so... Yep. Makes sense to take I, it. I think I still go forking because I want to see if there's a chance for me to double up some health pots and maybe bump back above 20. That makes sense, yeah. On this hero, uh, gaining health is quite nice because it also gives you the chance to get another treasure essentially for free. But this does make for a very good economy. Mix a whiz into kiss. And now we have a Baba. We don't have any slate characters, but it's still a good pickup for us. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the value of getting our ugly gosling helm onto the sporko instead of onto the mad mim now we all of a sudden have a big range character in the back line that we didn't have before so we got a well, lot also, stronger here hold on let me take that back we actually had an ogre princess on the bench and we sold it uh i wonder if there was merit with this baba of playing it in place of the frog prince that makes sense i think we probably figured it's not going to have enough attack to really participate at this point. And looking at this tiger board, it is just wow. thick. Wow. It is absolutely... Not yeah. Not only massive stats, uh, golden characters. The number of golden characters is terrifying. It appears that Terathel had to take a lot of damage to get here, but that Horn of Olympus on those two supports with that board and the double power orb, it's working. terathel has got a really solid mid-game board here. Now, Terathel has not won the game with that. And now we've gone down to five. We've gone down to yes. four, actually. Yeah, we so we get the second treasure from the hero power, which, you know, mixed feelings. Uh, but looking at the bright side, we did pick up Evil Eye. We do have some supports in the back row. So that makes us quite a bit stronger this turn. Actually, th this is a, maybe a little bit unlucky for our opponent, but we don't know how strong Tiku Wabu is, who is playing the beauty, and they're on 15 health. Uh, this feels like a good turn already, but we really need more. This, this isn't quite coming together. We, we have a decent set of treasures, but nothing that feels game winning at this point. And we can't really afford to take too many risks at four health. No. So what what can we do here? Maybe combat spells, maybe try to get a Lance treasure, but 
You know, another treasure, uh, if it doesn't include treasure map, I don't know if that's the real solution here. Often with Morgan going in, your hope is that you can kind of play around with the health breakpoints. And really, your hope is that you can play around with that 20 health breakpoint because it's a lot safer to be at 20 than bouncing around above and below 5, right? So the, the way things work with Morgan is when you hit 20 health, you get a treasure. When you hit 5 health, you get a treasure based on your current level. When you hit... 20 health you can go back up to 21 and hit 20 again for another treasure but we're in that spot with morgan now that the the inauspicious morgan spot of we don't really have the capacity to be juggling our health total that's not great it's not we got an unlucky shrivel onto one of our supports but it looks like we are trying to work towards scam but the question is do we have enough time to get there it's not looking great not being able to take out that Robin Wood in one shot is devastating, and now we just don't have enough to get through the rest. So it would appear that we are out to Tiku Wabu, GG to Lucas. Unfortunately, yeah. just did GG not come GG to together. Lucas. Yeah, it, we just couldn't get there. It just felt a little clunky in the mid game, and we can go back to something you referenced uh, that you saw in a practice session, but we did sort of intentionally take damage to our teammate early in the game. If we don't take that damage, maybe this plays out very differently. We wouldn't have been below 5 health to get that treasure, but maybe we have enough health to survive another turn. There's a lot going on when you're running a team-based format. Um, I'm assuming we're switching over to Tiku Wabu, Horse? Yes, I am. Apologies. I uh, took an extra moment to get that done, but I have Tiku Wabu pulled up. Oops. Oh, I've accidentally shared the Puff Puff hat. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I was going to share that later. We'll, we'll take another look at that later. Just a moment, the Puff Puff hat showed up on stream. Yuck, you haven't seen this yet. No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to it, though. I know it exists. Uh, you know what else I'm excited for? I talked about this a little bit ago. We see Tiku Wabu has Gosling Helm plus Poliwoggle. Uh, also, is, wait, is the Gwen uh, our teammate here? Uh, let me take a quick glance. Yes. Yes, it is. The Gwen. Okay, the Gwen so, is our, so that's Atsukuyan, the Gwen. Okay, yeah, so we're facing our teammate here, which it looks like we probably don't do too much to play around it, but <laughs> I'm also guessing that they probably have seven characters and opted not to play them all because they seem quite strong can with you that golden Can you imagine doing this math? Yeah, can you imagine? You're like, okay, we need to tie here if we can. I have a golden Oni tyrant. What do you have? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, and you have a limited amount of time to figure this out. It looks like they do a pretty good job. I mean, we're going to lose this fight, but considering how strong the Gwen is, this doesn't feel outrageous. I mean, we're alive, right? At, at this point, that, that's probably good enough. Uh, we can't survive another loss, so we're looking for a good turn. Only one treasure. Would love to pick up another one if we can, but we, we probably need more help than just that, right? We have a Scion. It's decently statted, but we still have a Queen of Hearts on our board, horse. Well, we are beauty, so at least that Queen of Hearts has a little more mileage than your average hero. But yeah, I the funny thing is jumping over in the middle like this, right? It's a little disjointed. And I took a look. My, the first thing I glanced at was the experience. And I went, I really want a good boy on this board. And then I looked down and went, we're not six yet. So we don't really have a perfect thing on level five here. I think that can pull this all together. We got Fool's Gold, Reduplicator, Three of Shields. Doesn't look like a snap pick because these don't seem snap pickable to me. Well, Three of Shields, you did just triple the Friendly Spirit and you have Sting. You can throw it in slot one. That's a lot of stats. Yeah. Uh, if you maybe get lucky and that lands on a range, it could be nice. Fool's Gold, probably when you're at six health, probably is just optimistic. We do have um, a Wombats on the bench to take the... Optimistic Reduplicator. Okay. No joke. Okay, I didn't know that we would be going for this, but... I I didn't expect to go for it. It could work, right? I mean, imagine the Friendly Spirit uh, buff lands on the Wombats. Uh, you're you're going to need board space also. Um, so we'll see how the fight RNG plays out. Yeah, we were watching a little As... bit of last-minute positioning going there. I think debating playing down a slot to make sure we get Reduplicator value and we don't get mm. Redup value here. But we get a big yeah, buff on our Rotten Apple Tree, which is nice. Well, this was a risk to take Reduplicator and play a full board. Uh, I don't know if it mattered. We see Icarus is quite strong here with uh, a huge Spellweaver, in fact. And let's not overlook, that's Roundtable that we're looking at on Icarus. I did overlook that. You know, the first thing I noticed was how much health that Spellweaver had. And uh, GG to Tiku Wabu here, of course. I was not expecting... So you, you get a 50 attack Spellweaver, you see that all the time, no big deal. But... 
a healthy Spellweaver. That's the round table talking, isn't it? All right, so as I'm taking a glance through who's still left in the lobby, we see Icarus uh, on the Curse King, who we will spectate. We also see his teammate Kleck is on the Horde Dragon, is still alive. So that combo, looking to do some things here late in this lobby as we're in the top four. Yuck, I know you're going to love this, absolutely. It would appear that the emotes are broken on my screen and just locked in place for the Horde Dragon in the fifth place position. So oh, see that we've got perma emotes. There you go. This is your dream. Uh, well, <laughs> something. Yeah, something. Yeah, I mean, this this Icarus board with that round table looks like Icarus was doing the Curse King special, playing spells, had a spell weaver because you're going to be playing a spell every turn anyway. It makes sense. And then probably bumped up into round table and went, well, I got this big spell weaver, so we might as well. And now we're slowly getting those Echo Woods in. They are big already, even without all of the tree support. Yeah, that they're pretty nice to have here. Obviously, you would love more ash woods if you can find them. We do have one, so we wouldn't mind working towards more tree stuff. We have two golden neons, so we're, how about a true love's kiss or two uh, in the upcoming turns? Assuming that we make it through this opponent who has now double golden oni king. You know what's stronger than one upgraded oni tyrant? Two of them. <laughs> uh, that's... Wow, we did pick up one of them, which helps quite a bit here. And in fact, it's going to allow us to win the fight. But we still leave them on 11 health. And they have Embiggening Stone. So they can do some very strong things here in the late game as well. And we see for opponent RNG, we are not facing our teammate. So, you know, if, if somehow we can knock out the Fates and Kleck on the Horde Dragon can knock out the Gwen, we could find ourselves with teammates in the top two. It's very interesting. I'd be curious to know what Kleck's board is looking like sitting up there, highest HP on the Horde Dragon. Okay, so we've got a dream into Pup, the Sphinx, Beauty, or Mrs. Claus. Beauty. Well, it doesn't feel like Beauty really is going to fit this comp, um, but it has some potential, right? Yeah. Um, the, the other possibility there could have been Sphinx. I'm not a huge Sphinx fan, but seeing extra spells each turn and some of them being free, we, we don't know what spells have been played this game because we haven't been spectating Icarus the entire time. True. But I think there was maybe some merit for Sphinx there as well. We do see this upgraded monster book, so we know at least a handful of spells must have been cast, plus the deck of many things. So the combat yeah. spells are probably all free. Uh, obviously not your knighthoods, but... If it's cast even one Pigo, having free Pigos. Now, the funny thing was, I was looking at this beauty going, would we ever find a way to squeeze a good boy on this board? Probably not. But it seemed like it maybe gave us the potential to add stats in a way that the others didn't. Yeah, it has some potential. We, we have staff as well. So finding something like a good boy is possible. The, the way that I think it could make sense is if we also are able to then play spells to buff that good boy with round table, you know, adding 10 attack would also add 10 health, for instance. Um, and that, that maybe could have some merit. Maybe that's the thought here. But yeah, not the best choices with that uh, being beauty or the other decent option being Sphinx. Um, so not a very good set of pumpkin summons. The monster that shows up, the Chupa, does not get a chance to attack. So we are going to put Pavlov all the way down to three health. We don't knock him out. Uh, actually, nobody gets knocked out here. We are still in the top four with four players alive. The Gwen being on one health. Yeah, this is wild. I got to imagine here we're interested in this knighthood, but can we play yeah. down for it? I guess we choose yeah. to. Might as well. Yeah, it's a lot well, stronger. Let's be honest. The Nian wasn't doing a lot anyway. It was a great potential kiss target, but you have to play that. You wish you had more gold and didn't have to sell to play down. But it's certainly worth here. And we're even on 14 health. Um, not to mention, we're up against our teammate now. So we knew this would happen based off of the uh, opponent matchups. We were due to face Kleck, who's on the Horde Dragon. We don't really know what Kleck has. I'm sure they're communicating between each other. I don't know if that's factored into the decisions. Well, when I hover um, over, I can see it shows good. Kleck's got three treasures and a four win streak. So that's kind of interesting. I, this one, I, I don't know these late rounds that you can really play for a tie effectively. So it, it's curious. I notice one thing is going on on Icarus's board. If you see it, all of the upgraded characters are on the front line. Yeah. And my guess is that you want to make sure those die. So if you do uh, win this fight, that you're not dealing any extra damage if you don't have to. So that's a great 
observation and i think probably exactly why they're doing that we also see click at 19 health so not in great danger of dying here that is quite a strong board that click's been able to build level seven treasure however that level seven treasure is for queen's wand now, interesting here, at first glance, it looks to me like Kleck wins this fight, but then you look back at the Echoes and you go, oh, wait a minute, these things have 900 health yeah. apiece, so this has got to be Icarus's yeah. fight. And so this positioning, while at first glance to me looked like Icarus was going to take a little bit extra damage from Kleck, turns out they knew exactly what they were doing. Icarus does as little damage as possible, but wins the fight because those Echoes are just too big. Yeah, and as you mentioned, that's great recognition to play all the Goldens in the front row to make sure you don't deal any unnecessary damage. And here we go. This is awkward. We've all been here. You need one extra gold. Can you find it? Can you get to it? Uh, it looks like the answer is no. Also, when you combine the Echo, as great as that could be, it does make you a little bit more scammable. True. Potentially. Um, and we are going up against uh, the Sadrak, who is now on one health. And I believe they're running some scam pieces. Do you recall, Horace? This is the Oni Tyrant board. This was the Gwen, board. right? This is the upgraded Oni Tyrant board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there were, last time we saw this, there were two upgraded Oni Tyrants on this board, and Icarus saw those too, so Icarus knows. Uh, okay. Well, if we can knock out the Sad Drac, that's going to mean that the stream team which is uh, the name of this team that includes Icarus and Kleck. We'll take down first and second place. We'll obviously play it out to see who wins. Oh, yeah, for sure. But this is a big one. Taking first and second place in the opening lobby would be a huge head start. What we did know, we knew there was upgraded Oni in six, upgraded Oni in seven, with a Medusa in five. So Medusa has the shot to, to, to deal with both these Echoes. But that's really, I think that's what this fight's going to come down to, is that Medusa versus these Echoes. Oh, the Medusas are up front now. That's mm. not perfect here. No, that's not great. Uh, also, that could be part of the reason that we didn't want to triple the Echo, or at least we didn't want to go out of our way to triple it. But yeah, Medusa's in the back would be ideal here. Um, also, when we get summons from the Pumpkin, there's no shot to get a, a back row Medusa here, because everything in the back row is level 6. Also, our Echoes have officially eclipsed 1,000 health. These are, you gotta scam them, or you gotta have big, big stats if you're going to fight them with stats, but we just, yeah, we needed those Medusas. We needed, we probably needed like a one five Medusa, something like that, but GG, of course. I mean, it was going to be tough no matter what, if, if we had full information or if our opponent had full information, maybe they do go slot one and slot five Medusa. That's obviously, it gets hard to position when you don't have full information. Uh, we do in fact, see what we were just talking about. We see Icarus and Kleck in the top two here. Um, as far as the team goes, they're going to get the same amount of points regardless. I'm sure being competitive players as they are, they both still want to win this lobby. Oh, though. I'm certain. If you play a game this long, you have a handful of things go right. You want to finish that thing out as strong as you can. But yeah, like you're saying, this uh, does not change the scoring aspect of the tournament overall. Uh, this team has now wrapped up first and second place points for this game. So yeah, they're going to be off to start. a big lead. Yeah, and we hadn't mentioned this, but we are using the standard Storybook Brawl point system that's been used in uh, tournaments prior. So it's going to be 10 points for first, 8 points for second, and then 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1, respectively. So stream team, Yuck, your team, stream team coming off to a strong start. Don't worry about that. We got we got something planned. We got, we got, we got a little something brewing for you. We got something special for you, Yuck. I may or may not be flexing off camera. Oh, right really? Now. You'll never know. I guess we won't because I'm in charge of showing you on camera and I'm not showing you right now. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we get a smite, but that doesn't take out the golden echo. Well, uh, speaking of echoes, our echoes have 1,462 health each. Is that going to be enough? Because our opponent's echoes, look at that amount of attack. Well, our opponent's Echoes are now approaching 3,000 health for the upgrade and Kleck making just a giant good boy Echo board. And it's not enough, though, to KO Icarus. So we go again. Yeah, we, we go again. That's going to be tough to beat. Uh, plus 100 sword uh, on that board. It, it's just, it's so many stats. What can we even do? Well, we Knighthood the other Ashwood. That's what we do. That's our entire turn. It's a good turn. 
Is it enough, though? I don't know. It's time for stats battle, though, and I'm here for it. I always love a good old-fashioned stats battle. Icarus choosing to slam that knighthood. We get as big as we can. We're going to smack trees into dogs and see what happens. I wonder if we want the monster book in slot two here. Maybe, um, yeah. Just Also, I wonder if we want one of the echoes in the front. Because the echo in the front can trade quite nicely. That's a good point too, yeah. Uh, I feel I feel like maybe we want the Robin out of slot one and in the back. We want the monster book maybe attacking in slot one and one of the echoes in the front. I think that's what I would do. Um, it, it's going to be tough here no matter what. I'm pretty we'll, confident we'll what I would do out. is I would just make sure that Echo Pigglemorse both or that 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 monster book Pigglemorse both Echo Woods on Clex board, and as long as we do that, I think we're in good shape. Okay. Well, uh, as we mentioned, team format, two teammates making it to the top two together. We oh, we are making. I love it. I love it. We are making positioning changes. Yeah, I like it. Well done, Icarus. I mean, you might Let's as well play to win, even if even if the points go the same way either way, you might as well. Let's see what happens. That's just a giant well, hundred sword. Mirror. We didn't have a mirror mirror last fight. <laughs> uh, well, uh, so they're they're likely communicating between each other. And I'm pretty sure Kleck is telling Icarus during the course of that turn that you have no chance. <laughs> Make your time. This game is over. Oh, my goodness. So we saw, what was it, a 13,000 health Echo Wood last time? No, it was only three. It was only three, I think. We're, we're, we're going to see much larger than a 3K Echo here. If the good boys even pop, which they're not. Yeah, when your good boys are value trading, you're in a good spot. If your opponent's good boys are value trading, you're in a bad spot. But if your opponent is also your teammate, you're okay with being in that bad spot. Because, again, first and second place for the same team. Incredible. GG's, everyone. GG's, Kleck and Icarus at the end there for first and second. Yuck, before we flip back to cam mode, I want to share something. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Uh, yeah, I know you want to see it, y'all. Okay, so prior to this event, I told my captains that I expected them to wear hats. Nobody's going to be on camera. I won't be able to confirm. However, that prompted Terathel to go out and make a hat. Terathel made a custom puff puff hat, which I have an image of. Let's just take a look. <laughs> so just so you know, Yuck, uh... this is what you're going up against. We're all, we're, uh, I, okay. We well, are consolidated. We are wearing hats today. Well, okay. So most people are probably aware, but I chose two of the team captains. Horse Thief chose two of the team captains. So one of my teams there, the stream team with Click and Icarus took first and second place, but I don't think we can compete with this. This is the most wonderful thing. This is, this is so wonderful. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to jump us back. Uh, Jeebus, are you ready for us? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. Here we are. Jeebus, I know you've been watching. You see anything yeah. interesting? Um, so, I mean, it's not terribly surprising based on how the, the game played out, but I did see that there was a lot of EXP purchased, um, definitely a lot more locked EXP than I'd been seeing what you, what you would normally expect, you know, they're, they're locking, it was a lot of wish more so than the, um, than the trash can, um, of the, uh, Turkish delight, of course, um, there was there were a few times you know towards the in the top four, Kleck actually ended up locking, because um, I, I watched Kleck quite a bit when we were getting later into it, and he locked um, Pigamorph multiple times, and didn't end up using it. One of the times he ended up fighting his teammate and just chose not to cast it. So that's something that you wouldn't normally see in a top four. You know if you lock. A pigamorph, you just slam it. That's perfect. That's exactly what you're hoping for. But because you're in a situation where you know your your teammate matters, then you know you you again you're sort of laying up a little bit of a softball to try and not totally blow them out of the water. Um, you know the the way that the top four played out, it was actually pretty deterministic. Maybe eight or ten turns prior, it feels like um, probably not that far. But Collect did actually end up um, holy grailing. Uh, through a lot of those treasures. Um, he had a little bit of the the good boy board going on after picking up the uh, plus 10, plus 10 to his whole board uh, with the Embiggening Stone. And then from there, ended up hitting Holy Grail and, you know, Horde Dragon with Holy Grail sort of spins out of control pretty quickly. Doesn't take a whole lot of, uh, lot of you know, turns for that to just be 
absurd, right? Yeah, that's something we weren't aware of, that there was a Holy Grail. I'm not surprised after seeing the board, we could have maybe speculated, but we had no idea. So, uh, yeah, it's great that you were able to keep up with that and uh, report back. I, I tend to agree with you. It, it feels like that lobby wasn't completely determined before the end of the game, but we could probably pick out who was going to make it deep in that lobby. And no surprise, uh, Icarus and Click both had great games individually and uh, it worked well together. We did see, uh, as we talked about during the, the game that we were watching, playing all of your golden characters in the front row in a fight that you know you're going to win against your opponent. It's not, uh, you know, not surprising, but it's it's well played, right? It's something that you typically wouldn't want to do when we had a spell weaver with round table. We throw it in slot one. All right. And yeah. And, you know, sorry, what... The one thing that I, I just wanted to mention before I forgot about it. So I was watching like the setup of um, if, if we remember back the, the sort of Zazie to Pavlov, um, the, the polymorph turn where, you know, um, he the played down a little turn? bit. Uh, sorry, the polywoggle turn, yeah. polywoggle turn um, where, you know, they, they sort of set up like, let's pull some of our units. I'll do the EXP. You know, we'll, we'll make sure that we win. You'll get your poly flip, you know, to, to really accelerate them ahead. Um, and it's possible that with a different flip, uh, you know, other than the tree that it would have ended up a lot better, you know, they would have gotten yep. the extra sleigh and they just ended up with, you know, a very good flip. Of course, you know, the, the tree on five, definitely very, very strong, but it ended up costing them a lot more health than I think they were anticipating. Um, and that you know, we saw the outcome of that where, where Zazie just was a bit behind then for the a good majority of it um, from there. So, yeah, very interesting as far as that team dynamic. Yeah, that's a great point because I do think they played that well, but that was pretty unlucky. That particular summon that you then can't get through, you can't slay against, you maybe take more damage than what they had anticipated going into the fight. Yeah, that's, that's uh, one of the things that can happen is the RNG, and uh, it's kind of extra awkward when it happens against your teammate. Yeah, absolutely. So I got we got we got teams lining up for game two. We're, we're we're still talking, we're still organizing, but I just want to let you know we got uh, on Godot's team. We got Jeremiah and Godot are going to be playing this round. Okay. We've got Trons G and Binor playing from uh, that's that's my team. That's uh, <laughs> sorry, that's Terathel's team. We got Tikuwabu and Atsukuyan playing from Tikuwabu's team, and then we got Duke and Icarus playing from your boy's team. Okay, so we have some teams that chose to completely swap players, and then we have, uh, I think, a couple of players that are going to run it back uh, because I, I noticed that you said Icarus was going to play again as we saw Icarus run deep in the last lobby. And I'm also going to take this opportunity. I'm going to flip us over. We're going to go off cam for just a sec. I'm going to share the scores. So right now, round one complete. Uh, we've got Team Bahamas Rejects. So that's Wait for Godot, Zazie, Pavlov, and Jeremiah. They have seven points so far. Stream team, of course, taking first and second with Kleck and Icarus. They got 18 points racked up thus far. Team Puff Puff sitting at six and Team Japan sitting at 10. So we got some points racking up, but it's early. This is going to change rapidly. By the way, uh, speaking of Team Japan, uh, we haven't gotten full confirmation, but we are under the assumption that these are all players from Japan. Now, I think this is a full Japanese team. Horse Thief, which is amazing. I often talk about how great it is to be interacting with people all over the world. And this is just an example of that. Uh, it, it's one thing that I really like about this game. A lot of other games have servers for different regions. Well, we're playing with everybody. And in this case, we believe we have a full team from Japan. All right, y'all. Uh, everybody's in for game two. I think maybe without further ado, we start flipping into that angle. Uh, anything else? Either of you want to say before we start going that direction? No, I mean, I, I think it's still anybody's game. I mean, with, with four to go, even even with such a commanding lead to start, uh, the stream team can't, they can't play too safe because there's still a lot of points to be given up, so. Yeah, well said. As we saw them pick up 18 points in one round, when there are a potential 18 points available for each team each round, we could maybe get some pretty big swings. So, yeah, definitely far from over. We've got at least three games remaining. If there's a tiebreaker, we would play one additional. Um, unlikely to happen, but it could certainly happen. It would be fun if it did. So three more games uh, as we're getting ready to get into game number two. 
All right, and I just let them know they're firing now, and I'm going to get us spectating somebody. So let me just get that set up for just a second. Also, big thanks to Jeebus. Uh, I was really hoping to get some uh, extra insight, some things we didn't catch on stream, and we got exactly that. So well done, Jeebus. Uh, there were there were actually quite a few. Um, I, I I remember um, Horse Thief mentioning that it didn't seem like the players were quite on six. Some of them were um, as much as two, even three XP ahead in that lobby, um, just because of how much um, of that sort of. And not quite win trading, win trading happening through, you know, leveraging that that teammate aspect, which I, I find to be really interesting in this mode. Yeah, and I wonder if the lobbies are all going to be faster on experience. I would expect that they probably will be, and the players could maybe adjust outside of the team format. Just the fact that the lobbies will likely play out differently could come into play for some of the decision making. Yeah, it, its own baked-in metagame just based on, you know, now you have this teammate, so then everybody's going to assume that everybody's going to be slamming EXP, so you can afford to be a little bit greedier um, through the mid-game then uh, with that in mind. Okay, it looks like we have Lobby 2 going. We, we are in. Are we are in, a little we bit are late. Live. Uh, we got, we, we, I was a little slow on the Hero Select, but I'm following Duke Silver on Celestial Tiger. Duke Silver is the lobby boss this time around, and it looks like Duke's picked up a bossy with a bossy in the shop. Well, getting a pair start on Tiger is great. Uh, we don't know what the other options were, but, you know, picking up Tiger is always fun. And uh, the, the high roll potential. I got to imagine it with that open slot that it was bossy, chicken bossy, and we bought and sold the chicken and pulled a bossy just to isolate the two pair, or the, the one pair. So. so we have Duke Silver on Tiger, and his teammate is going to be Icarus, who is playing Zippy. So that's one we'll try to watch closely. So Duke and Zippy, okay, Zippy on, or Duke, Duke and Icarus on Zippy. Uh, how about this, instead of me hovering over and taking up the whole screen while I do this, who, uh, we got Jeremiah and Godot, Yuck, could you tell me who yeah. we got playing those we've got, We've got Jeremiah on skip, and I'm gonna have to see here where Godot is at. Godot is on Goldilocks. All right, so skip, skip and Goldilocks. Goldie. How about Trons G and Binor? Who do we got? All right. We've got Trons on Wonderwaddle and Binor is on Curse King. So that's a pair. And how about our, our final pair, Tikuwabu and Atsukuyan? All right. We have Tikuwabu on Pod Piper and Atsukuyan is playing Gwen. Wait, was Atsukuyan Gwen last game as well? Or am I mistaken? Uh, we had Gwen. I think so. I, yeah. 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 I, yeah. Think so. yeah I, I think you're right because Atsukuyan had that super fast well i don't know if it was super fast but that that upgraded oni tyrant we were watching them figure out how to position around taking minimum damage amongst the team with that but it was definitely a gwen with the upgraded oni tyrant that caught my eye because i thought maybe that was an early kiss or something well so a bit of a strange board when you have two bossies and two zebra corns but that's two pairs on tiger and two pairs equals tons of potential here absolutely so tiger tiger is just this interesting experiment in acceleration right the early game you got no hero power until you start making some treasures when you start making some treasures they do more than they usually do but really you're kind of waiting for one of those usually level three treasures and usually treasure map to give you a big boost and let you know where the game's about to go this is not well, auspicious when you roll a shop at twos the second you yeah, go to three speaking of level three treasures how do you get level three treasures when you can't even find level three characters this is not the shop. No triples, nothing that really wants to play on board. I think you can maybe just a five rolling here, but that always feels bad on the five gold turn. You can maybe buy the black cat in the mem and probably wouldn't even bother with the spell because the rolls do feel quite important here. Um, uncomfortable no matter what. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's what you're saying. You're either looking at bye-bye spell or you're looking at roll and see what you can do with the next shop window so we've opted to go mim for the zebra corns makes a ton of huh? sense those things attack much better when they've got attack support and we just took a lonely prince in the spell we're not strong yet pretty far from it uh are we going to give up a poly slate we are not because we attack into the poly we do lose the fight but losing a fight to piper is no surprise 
on level 3.0 and we are straight into not only combining the bossy but also another pair uh also another shop with no level three character so this is a big decision here every two and three treasure on tiger is really important we got bounty board shepherd sling jumping beans we didn't even have time to think it through that shepherd sling is so many numbers plus two two to everything right now and two black yeah. cats in the shop exactly that uh, the black cats being in the shop make it even better because you're getting more characters that are going to catch that buff in addition to we pick up now another pair i i have to think we're going to lock for the pair that's in the shop uh which we've got all two drops usually not ideal but we've got a pretty solid treasure and you know some potential going forward with more pairs I, got, so I don't hate the spot we're in, but it, it's it's a little bit strange, to be honest. It's interesting. You mentioned you would lock this, and I would be tempted to lock this too. It, Tiger, Tiger's the sort of hero that I think could be a bit of a blank canvas where you could have multiple people play the same hero and play it differently. So it's kind of curious to see what Duke might do differently than what you or I might do here. It looks like Duke doesn't really want to save that pair up. Oh, fighting yeah, the teammate was... right now too. We didn't notice that. Oh, you're right. We did not notice that. And uh, I wonder if the, the black cats looked even better when your opponent uh, is your teammate and playing Zippy. So you, you feed them extra uh, hero power value potentially um, and winning the fight. So we knock Icarus down to 25 health, but we do give Icarus quite a few kills. I'm noticing one thing. Icarus got evil twin. So in my estimation, a fast evil twin is... On your bench on turn 3.1. Oh, well, we do have a treasure selector with jumping beans, sandals, and heartwood. Now, this one's spicy. Sometimes you get the sarcophagus and you kind of like having that heartwood around. Jack's jumping beans given an 8.8 eight, ain't half bad. I don't think we're thinking sandals. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, and also we have some animals. So corrupted heartwood definitely had some merit here. But beans is, it's a lot of stats this early in the game. Beans activating twice in a turn. And we have two treasures. How about this third treasure? Uh, which it's going to be awkward this turn if we take it. It will be. Really awkward, in fact. Well, but we, we don't really want to lock. Oh, we don't get Skipping Stone. I was hoping for Skipping Stone. We got sp That's actually where I was going. Yeah, I was going to say, what if we get Skipping Stone on the next one? It could be insane. But you know what else is pretty insane? A, a Dancing Sword is good right now. Spinning Wheel is very good. But come on. It's got to be Dragon's Nest here. First of all, the animation is amazing. Second of all, we're going to level four next turn. And come on, we can feast. Poor Steve. We can feast. I want to I wanna feast. I got I to gotta ask you the question, though. Your game, how often are you picking Dragon's Nest in this spot without a dragon on the board? Every time. Every time? I, I've yeah, become time. a little bit more gun-shy about speculating on Dragon's Nest, even on Tiger, even knowing how good it is. So you still believe? Every time. Right. Yep, every time here. Because it's if it was only the feasting, you're, you're not guaranteed to find it, right? But it, Lightning Dragon is decent to throw in there as well. You were decently strong on board with the other treasures. Don't get me wrong. I don't hate the spinning wheel here. I, I, actually, I really like it, but I personally can't pass that dragon's nest. And honestly, oh. I, those two baby dragons feel very purchasable on this hero with dragon's nest. Oh, yeah. And for four gold, I would be more than happy to have that amount of stats added to our board. I mean, you're, you're talking a two gold 15-14 when the biggest thing you get is a 7-7 seven, seven that turns into a 14-14 if you're below 20 health on level 4, right? Like, two gold 15-14, that's it's just pound for pound. Or, you know, you, you, you get a lot of bang for your buck with something like that, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're still in a great spot, though. We pick up a friendly spirit. We have five gold left to work with. Thanks for the spinning wheel. We had a couple extra gold going into this turn. Not a real appealing shop here. Do you think maybe we're looking buy at that the white. I'm thinking maybe buy the chicken and roll. I can't imagine we're looking at the white. It's possible. Level three treasures are insane. We got a couple of dwarves. Um, It'll flip the lonely prince. I wonder if we're paused. I'm just wondering what we're paused and we're staring at something here. I well, it could, it could even be the spell. Maybe you're trying to decide lightning bolt is a great spell on this turn, but spending two gold when you only have five gold remaining is expensive. It could be a number of things. As you mentioned, this is the type of hero. And let's be honest, any hero you can play different with different players who approach the game differently or, or have a long-term game plan that's different than, you know, what we think. Uh, and it looks like the debate was for the spell or at least partially for that. We also buy a royal to flip the frog. Up against a Gwen, we have a spiked feasting dragon. Gwen wants to eat today. Oh, I love it. I love it. I don't know that we're... I don't know that the Gwen is winning this fight. I think we might be winning this one, but... Let's... No, but they did They did get the feast, and I can't help myself here, but I, I got to do it, horse. <laughs> do it. Feast! Oh, beautiful. 
You love to see it, even if it's your opponent. I don't know, something about it. It's so satisfying. So Gwen takes a hit there, but with an upgraded feast, you keep getting one of those every turn. You get, you know, something with an extra 2-2 two, two in stats, something else with an extra 2. It, it adds up pretty quick. I'm going to be curious to see how Gwen's health plays out throughout this lobby. Not just because, you know, that's one of my teams, but yeah. <laughs> Well, um, speaking of teams, the player that we're watching is part of the team that took first and second place in the last lobby. Um, this game's looking okay at this point for Duke, but not incredible. And our teammate Icarus on the zippy is at 18 health. So that's not going especially well. Wait, Yuck, if, uh, you, looks like we're, if you had to say your ahead. line, I think I might have to say mine here. I'm, I'm looking at chat. Well, they didn't. They didn't buy it. Yeah, I guess that's I mean, true. That's true. All right, you'll I'll find wait, a better I'll opportunity. Yeah. There, yeah, I'm sorry, Chad. Time flies. <laughs> there, there will be a perfect opportunity. It will present itself, I believe. So, I mean, we're still over here. We does a level twos. That the level two treasures probably are not how we accelerate from here. It's probably Time the flies. level threes. So, yeah, I agreed. like that sleeper that we picked up last turn because it gave us another line on another three. But we're not really hitting the lottery in terms of level three pairs. Well, Whoa. how about okay, that? Okay, there's something. Uh, and does have just enough time to buy something out of the shop to be gold efficient and clear a spot in the shop. We'll definitely take that. It's not going to be a treasure that's going to benefit Tim our hero with Tiger, but it's a great triple. And, and, you know, this is a spot where I think it's possible that we would skip the treasure. I'm not saying it's likely, but Tiger treasures, when they're level two and three treasures, sometimes can be better than what we would be offered from a level four. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think what I liked most, I looked at the start of that fight, we still had 34 health. Now, granted, we're down to 25, but we have a little bit of room to work. And sometimes that's the sketchy part is if you don't have a good level three, you, you just don't have any health left on Tiger. Now, that's probably one of my favorites of the level four treasures that Duke just picked up here, the three of swords. Yeah, and we see it offered alongside Three of Shields. It, most of the time, Three of Swords is going to be better than Three of Shields. There are some niche scenarios, maybe if you're playing Dwarves or um, need the extra health for, I don't know, a Nutcracker or a ranged character. But but yeah, Three of Swords, very, very strong. Happy to have it. Uh, added value as well from the Friendly Spirit. Do we ever play the experience here? It, it doesn't feel great, and our board is very clunky. We do have some things we can sell out of hand pretty easily, though, if we wanted to go for it. We sure do. I'm I'm torn between... We've done about as much as we can right now with the twos and threes we're being offered, and we're going to need... We're going to need something to accelerate a little bit more quickly, and I just, I'm not able to put my thumb on what exactly that is. It seems to me that we're in well, a spot where we're probably going to be very interested in things like Robin Woods next turn, maybe even a Wombat, just, you know, generically strong things on five. Yeah, I agree with you. Also, I don't think we can go chasing other three drops, but if we find pairs to the level three characters that we have, you know, level three treasures, even this late, are super, super impactful. Yuck, are you so, ready? I'm ready. You, you missed your chance. We just feasted. I wasn't ready. We just feasted. I'm ready now, though. It's going to come back around. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm ready now. I, I wasn't. Okay. It doesn't come back around. All right, next time. I, I'll, I'll be ready next time. All right, that is Jeremiah that we see who's able to get the feast, and they have Coin of Charon. Jeremiah not uh, only well. feasting, but winning as well. Sometimes when you're yeah. feasting, you're not very strong, so that's very scary, but we do now have a pair of sleepers. Well, we don't yet. I'm assuming we do buy that, in fact, and we do. There's also more experience. Not only experience, experience that also gains us health. And when you're at 15, that is a factor. Mm -hmm. Gaining some health is not the worst thing. Would also put us on level 6 next turn. But it's kind of a awkward spot because what I think we really want is maybe a treasure. A, a, a level 3 treasure, specifically. Yeah, it's um, problematic. And board strength. Exactly that, board strength. It's problematic taking that experience when we're not sure if we can even win a fight. Like, I look at this board, and I'm not... I, I think it might be able to take a fight, but I'm not confident that it's going to take most fights, which makes me feel like I want to find stuff like Robin Woods right now. Like, I, I just I want to get more power on this board. I want to maybe triple one of these threes, and if I'd spend three on experience to start my turn, I probably can't afford to roll enough to maybe even find one of these pairs that I've been hanging on to. Yeah, I like it. Uh, are we setting up for Cupid? We are, in fact, setting up for Cupid. Um, okay, well, we'll see how it works out. 
Maybe we'll get lucky here with the jumping beans landing on the friendly spirit or something, but I feel like this board needs some help. Up against Atsukuyan on the Goldilocks, a hero that I typically don't play well myself, but I'm looking at this board and there's a Medusa. This this looks like a board that functions across the way here. Yeah, a Golden Chupa. So even these vampires in the back row have a decent amount of stats and not, not only is the Medusa going to be strong generally, it, it really gets some great value there where it attacks into the Golden Friendly Spirit. So denies a lot of value in what is a really close fight. We are able to win this, though, with a board that didn't feel that strong, and our opponent looked quite strong. So, Horsey, maybe you and I are underestimating this board just a tiny bit. Perhaps. I, I, really, what we just saw was the power of the Three of Swords multiplied across six sheep, right? You know, the initial token, the peep itself that pops. So yeah. each of those peeps got to deliver 12, well... 16 damage a piece. I apologize. They both, they'll start well, even more because the peeps start with more attack, but still very effective. Well, uh, these aren't necessarily what we're looking for, uh, to be honest. Uh, I mean, all of these are okay, but none of them are the huge power spike you were hoping for in this bot. You, you were super excited to get that level three triple. It's what we've been talking about, what I'm sure Duke's been waiting for. And to get that, uh, it's a little bit deflating, although it is still solid. And I didn't check, I forget, Icarus is not the Piper, that's Tiku Wabu we're about to fight. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Well, I think, strangely, as this game has progressed, our treasure set and some of the things that we've been offered, it just looks more and more and more like we want to play summons. We have Three of Swords is great when you got tokens respawning, the power, well, you know, given a 2-2 because Tiger as opposed to just a 1-1 one, one is useful on all the tokens that respawn. And we've, we've been slowly but surely looking very, very, very summonsy over time. It does look like it could be summons if we find a bear stone next turn. If there is a next turn, we have to make it out of this round first and we are facing first place, so we expect to be quite strong. The reason they're quite strong is largely due to that monkey's paw. Sure is. That is a very Piper thing to do. Get yourself a... A magic rune early on, find yourself a blind mouse triple, turn the four into a five. You got yourself a monkey paw and you're just happily saving health through the middle rounds. I, this looks like it's going to end up being fairly close in the end. I, unless this Cupid does some magic, I don't know that we take this. Well, you know, I, I have an opinion about Cupid, but you know, the, the Cupids are okay here. Uh, mixing in some scam in a situation where your uh, comp isn't quite coming together is reasonable. So we do make it out with non-health. We're facing our teammates. So wait, this turn is spicy can we, for a number of reasons. Can we pause for that order and just praise that order? Yeah, yeah, picking up the magic runes here, which does give a level seven treasure. Magic runes is exactly what you were going for, for from a level two treasure. Um, there's so much to talk about here. We can't talk about no. everything. Um, Fairy Queen's Wand, Round Table, Black Prism. Again, we're against our teammate, so they're going to likely be communicating with each other. Um, and neither one of them is in the best spot health-wise. So yeah. this is uh, an important turn for the longevity of both of these players in this game. And what do you want here? Fairy Queen's Wand, it's good tempo-wise, but not that great in general. I I'm thinking Black Prism, but what do you think, Horse? Well, with the board we got, I think it's Fairy Queen's Wand. Uh, we got... The peep, we got the black cat, we got we got a couple of things. We're already there's even an echo wood sitting in the shop, and when these resummons okay. come back, it gives more stats. I, I'd love to optimistically think we could go round table. Black Prism's my favorite. I think it's the most fun, but I think for me it's Fairy Queen's wand here. Now the interesting part is we took so long deciding that as we were probably communicating with the team. Will we get this Robin and yeah. uh, this Echo in time? Or are we floating five gold? Wow. Oh no. Yeah, we, it's tough, right? Because figuring out how to position against your opponent is very difficult, not something you typically do in Storybook Brawl. And let's see if they got it figured out. It, it looks like they did a almost great job, in tie. fact. Incredible. They almost are very well done. Both players were very low health. This was important. Floating five gold feels bad, but let me say it would have felt worse for one of them to knock the their teammate out. Absolutely. So I think this is very well done and a great usage of their time. Um uh, also, okay, Fairy Queen's Wand. So it does feel like maybe we're summons. I was thinking Black Prism, if we can find a way to make it through that round, maybe we can kiss our entire board. Maybe do something with that. Yeah. Uh, go for the that home run type of play, a mix of Wiz into Kiss even. If you can get there, it's always fun. Not always good, but always fun. Um, but yeah, now, w what are we looking for? I mean, does a Wombats make the cut when you only have two gold left? I mean, it's... A board improvement over that Awoken Princess that's sitting in slot two right now. So, and then you also, you're staring at those 
baby bears, but we just picked up the Oni Tyrant too, which makes it all the more awkward. Like, do we want to be spending more money on things that may play toward bear stains and, you know, that sort of? Or do we want to be now looking for pumpkin? Because Fairy Queen's wand's great with a pumpkin too. Uh, for me, I think we have to accept that we're not going to have a synergistic comp and we just have to survive. Um, In that case, I want that the wombat. Does the wombats help us survive? We have uh, a chicken in hand as well. So if we roll the shop, we could still potentially buy a six drop in the oh, next shop. That's a good point. Which is worth considering as well because there are some better hits. Well, there's a good one. Um, oh, oh, no. Well, there's a good boy, which is interesting. Uh, the bobble with the oni is not terrible. Um, I I'm assuming we're going good boy here. I mean, that's sitting at 1411. It looks like it wants to be on the board now. Okay, I thought. Okay, we're we're repositioning. We kind of want yep. the friendly spirit first because we got the oni though. Even though we got yep. the good boy, it's weird. Yep, I'm I'm actually pretty happy with the friendly spirit in slot one, even though it does get medusa. Um, the one thing I will say is I wonder if we ever want the peep in the front row. It doesn't matter here, but sometimes the peep in the front row means that you still have a good character on board after the good boy dies. But let's not worry about that right now because we just popped a pumpkin. That's a lot of stuff. We lost the peep. One That's of those things are a Medusa. Yeah. That, That's, it's got to be the coffin nail here, and it is. Yeah, that's going to be too much for us. For sure. Uh, GG Duke, I really enjoyed that play the round prior where their teammates were facing each other. Yeah, GG Duke. But, uh, sixth place this round for one of the players on the stream team. I got to admit, I don't recall who knocked Duke out. I was a little too caught up in the combat. <laughs> Do you... <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, wait, how did we both miss it? Because I kind of missed it as well. Um, hold on, I, I'm popping around. It was, uh, I believe it was Godot. Was it Godot's? On the Goldilocks. I believe it was Godot. Okay, perfect. Well, hold on, actually, was it? I th maybe. All right, well, let's spectate Godot either. All right, way. we're flipping to Godot. <laughs> so, we're looking at level six. We got a bunch of monsters. I see a pumpkin in the shop. Godot's looking like a pretty intriguing game here, if I got to say. Yeah, certainly. As I was flipping through, this this one definitely caught my eye. Uh, we have some pairs. We have the pair of Onis, the pair of Babas, which can be very good. We likely want to get to this pumpkin, and we, in fact, do get to the pumpkin. We had enough gold left to only have to sell one thing here at the end of the turn. Um, Yeah, Medusa to the back row. I love that. Yep. This can be awkward to position this type of comp. You have so many things that want to be in the back row. The pumpkin, the oni, the medusa. Um, so I, I like this. I like this positioning a lot. Um, you do cut the babas, so we're not worried about the scaling on the chupas at this stage of the game. Wow. And we we talked about summons. Here is a board of summons. On the piper, no big surprise. This is a strong board with the double bear stain now. We are... The, I mean, this Piper board still got some work to do to get there, quote-unquote, with the summons. That Echo's not getting huge yet, but as these baby bears die, that Echo's going to start approaching 300-300. Unfortunately, the baby bears... We just didn't have enough stuff up front. The bear stains had to attack in too fast on the other side of the board, so that benefits Godot quite a bit. Yeah, and one of the bear stones tried to survive, but ends up getting shot down late in the fight. And then the Medusa attack from the back row to seal the deal. That's going to put us all the way into our top three. Looks like a GG to both Tiku Wabu and Icarus. We had uh, two KOs at the same time. And like you're saying, top three. And we get the ghost of Icarus now. So stream well, team uh, did not run the lobby this time around. No, and Jeebus had mentioned as we were getting ready to start this lobby how it's still wide open in anybody's game after the stream team took first and second place in round one. Well, guess what? Out of the top three, we have two players from the same team. So it could be another lobby where the same team goes first and second place, which will certainly close the gap and make it interesting uh, going forward. Even if they don't finish first and second, this is going to be big as far as coming back and making this competitive. Yeah, wait for Godot and Jeremiah. Team Godot looking to pick up a lot of points this round, no matter what happens from here. Now, I do see uh, Otsukuyan still in the lobby here, too. That was the Gwen with the super early upgraded Feasting Dragon. So I'm going to be very curious to see what that board looks like next time we get a chance to look at that. Yeah, and they went down to low health uh, very low. pretty quickly, but have stabilized and managed to hang on. So, you know, that can be scary if you see somebody on low health and not getting knocked out uh i'll reference a couple days ago where i faced you in a lobby and you were on one health for a number of turns <laughs> turns out you had world tree it does tend to go that way sometimes 
Oh, look at Icarus's board. Hat ball with the Drax Saber upgrade to Pumpkin. It, it was a lot of power on this board. Actually, that Spell Weaver's looking kind of spooky. Well, that and it's a golden pumpkin. Very spooky. Well, so Are we okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. That's I don't think so. Not good. That's not good. That. Oh wow. No, we're not okay. But we don't die. No, we do not die. Uh, we did lose to the ghost though, which always feels bad. But not dying is great. And you know what else? We did it. Top two. Atsukuyan both from is team. Out. Both from team Bahamas Rejects. GG. So Atsukuyan. again. Just like last round, both of these players are going to want to win the lobby, but as far as the scoring goes, it's already determined that this team is going to take both first and second place points, which uh, is big. That, that's kind of funny that we just, just one small thing here. We saw Godot drop the Gloves of Thieving. Godot knows exactly what's on the other board. Obviously, for the overall score, it doesn't matter which of these two players wins here between Godot and Jeremiah, but... The Gloves of Thieving with your teammates sounds like a fun thing to play I, I into. Mean, yeah, but, but what do you do here? Do you tell your teammate well, what you've done this turn? Or do you tell them something different than what you've actually done? Do you tell them, oh, I pivoted and I'm playing trees? Look, a big you know? factor of being on a team is trust, Yuck. You can't start lying to your teammates in the middle of the tournament here. You can't start lying. Well, you got you to gotta maintain that trust. Okay, well, maybe you can be a bit more vague without lying direct. Okay. A lie of omission? I'm, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to be very honest. I, I, I appreciate honesty. I'm glad you brought me back to reality. I'm just saying there are some, some options and some fun things you can do. You got a little bit of uh, some, some uh, competitive nature in you somewhere there, I think. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely competitive as we know these players are as well. Oh, Doomy B against Doomy B. Oh, you hate seeing the family come together against each other like this, but, you know, sometimes it's got to happen. Look at the siren taking multiple books. Oh, my goodness. Wait, you stole two of the monster. What is happening? We've got a Pigo. We've got a minus 30, but we're getting these spells from these books we stole. We stole these well, things fair and square. We have a Cupid on the back row, so we certainly can't lose. Oh, well, I'm, 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 I think I'm rooting for Jeremiah here. Are you rooting for Godot? Is that... Uh, I'm not rooting for anybody, oh, okay. but I, I was rooting for the, the Cupid because the Cupid needs <laughs> some encouragement. Uh, ends up getting pig owed. It didn't matter. GG, wait for Godot, also Jeremiah. Well done to that team. Uh, as we're going to get the scores uh, tallied up, th this is shaping up to be very fun. <laughs> as much fun as I'd hoped and maybe then some. I'm having such a good time. I got to show the puff hat again in between games. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, let's go back to Yuck Jeebus and me. Hey guys, what do you think about that round? You know, it was good. Um, I was bouncing around to, you know, all the players again. And honestly, the team I think that impressed me the most was actually Team Japan. Um, so, you know, you, you'd mentioned that Gwen, um, oh, you know, had been alive for quite a while with low health. How about I share your Part screenshot? Is, I see your screenshot here. Yeah, so both times that they fought, they the first time was relatively early on. They tied. So they managed to set up a board in such a way that they would tie so then Gwen wouldn't take any extra damage. And then this is much later in the game. This is, you know, one hit away from death. And uh, the Piper, being at 30, doesn't care that much about losing a little bit of health actually ran just two units, um, pulled essentially everything from the board, was able to pull all these units, and you actually saw that that, that allowed um, that allowed the Gwen to take third. You know, it, it they unfortunately had a rough combat and, and you know, got knocked out in fifth uh, later on, but it, you know, given a little bit better RNG, they might have been, you know, able to, to secure two top four spots there. So I'm, I was actually really impressed with their their team communication and how they were able to position their boards. Um, obviously, congratulations to you know, Team Bahamas here. Um, a bit unfortunate for the poor Wonder Waddle. Um, you know, you guys didn't get to see it, but one of the reasons I think that Wonder Waddle struggled so much is uh, I don't know if you've ever played Wonder Waddle with the the staff. Um, it's kind of a non bow, and they got a really early. Um, magic runes into mouse with some pretty bad treasures so they invested a lot of resources into getting uh pretty much nothing um so that caused them to bleed out quite a bit and then when they got another tier five treasure later it also had staff um and some other treasures that didn't really do anything so 
that caused a lot of the power spike to sort of just not be there. And that, you know, demonstrated itself with, a, with an unfortunate placement. Yeah, we're so lucky to have you picking up on some of this stuff, Jeebus, that we obviously can't catch while we're spectating a single player. Uh, great job on picking up on that stuff. I, I love hearing about all this. Allows us to understand a bit better about what happened. But I really like what you said about Team Japan. That's incredible. But because as you mentioned, if you have a lot of health and your teammate is low health, help them out. And if they did exactly that and allowed one of the players to get to top three, as you mentioned, unfortunately, weren't able to get both of the players later into the lobby, as I'm sure they had hoped. But still, very creative, very well done. Uh, a new aspect with this team format, as we keep talking about that, and we'll continue to talk about that. It just adds so many elements to the game that have never really even been considered by most players. I'm going to go ahead and take us over to the overall scores right now through two games. Uh, looks like we've got... Team Bahamas Rejects sitting with 25 points. The stream team sitting on top with 27 points. Team Puff Puff has nine points so far and Team Japan sitting at 21 points. But again, we've seen 18 points get collected for a team in back-to-back -back games. So any of these scores could bump up up to 18 points after any given game. Also, Horace, only one of these teams has a player with a Puff Puff hat. So who's really in the lead? That's a good point too. That's a very solid point you make. Let me take a look. I am uh, organizing the next lobby. Uh, I believe our casting squad is going to change for the next game, and uh, it's going to be Jeebus and Yuck commentating on the next one, so I'll be playing the guy behind the scenes looking at what everybody else is doing. I'm kind of excited to poke around while we're playing. But I By the way, let me take this opportunity to say the behind-the-scenes stuff that you're doing as well while streaming. It's incredible. It's underappreciated. Uh, people watching probably don't realize how much is going on while casting a tournament. So a big shout out to you, Horace. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm just going to, I'm going to be organizing the lobbies for just a moment over here. All right, Jeebus, we're going to, we're going to cast together. Not the first time we've casted together. Uh, I'm excited for that. Uh, yeah. Is there anything um, other than what you've added? You know, we talked about what we've seen in the previous lobbies. Is there anything you'd like to see that maybe hasn't come up yet? I mean, there's nothing that comes to mind for me. But have you theory crafted any concepts or ideas that haven't come up yet? Um, well, one of the things that actually did come up in this last game that I was a little disappointed about is I saw multiple crystal balls get passed. Um, they took treasures that gave them like tempo or some other garbage. <laughs> um, they could have just taken crystal ball, which I think was, you know, would have been better. Um, I was, you know, the only player that actually uh, took a crystal ball sort of in the dark and leveraged it properly was Icarus. Uh, which ended up getting fourth place. You know, I am not, you know, a doctor, so I don't know if there's any correlation there, but, uh, you know, definitely, definitely should look into that a little bit more, I think. Well, I'm certainly not surprised to hear you say you want to see more Crystal Ball uh, for a couple of reasons. It's quite strong. Also, Jeebus, I happen to know you're quite the Crystal Ball enthusiast. I think it's, I think it's all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I think Polly Woggle is all right as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we do we do have our we do have our pairs. The lobby is forming. I want to let you know who we're going to be watching this next game on Terathel's team, aka Team Puff Puff. We got Trons G and Binor. Okay. On Godot's team, aka the Bahamas Rejects, we got Jeremiah and Pavlov are going to be running. On your boy's team, aka the stream team, we got your boy and Kleck. And then on Tiku Wabu's team, aka Team Japan, we got Hamio and Hojoj. And I don't know if anybody, anybody, if anybody knows if, if at any point I'm pronouncing any names incorrectly, please feel free to correct me. I would, I would love to be corrected. I'd love to know that I'm saying things correctly. But we got a lobby brewing up, and it looks like we're almost full. So that'll be coming up here shortly. All right, excellent. And uh, so I think this is uh, our first time seeing a few of these players. Um, including, I think this is the first time we've seen both of these players from Team Japan, if I'm not mistaken. Our first time seeing your boy here, who I happen to know loves Slay Comps. Um, probably as much as you love Crystal Ball and I love Polly Wago Jeeva. So we'll see if your boy can assemble a Slay Comp this game. That's going to be, so that that's one thing that we talked about going into this, actually. About your boy specifically and your boy's love for Bounty Board. One thing a Slay Comp has to do, it has to get Slays. When you fight your teammate, though, sometimes your sleigh boards get so big that once they start slaying, they're hard to stop in the middle of that process. 
So that's a whole other wrinkle to throw into that as to how do you get your slays and let's say you're playing a bounty board, get your money, but not punch your teammate at the same time. Yeah, that, uh, that does uh, add a new element. Uh, also, I'm picking up some information in chat. Apparently, your boy here is having some I audio issues and cannot communicate with Kleck. He can't hear Kleck. He can talk to Kleck, it seems like, but cannot hear Kleck, which really makes that difficult. It's already going to be a unique scenario, something that uh, they were maybe at least mentally preparing for, maybe even practicing for. But when you can only communicate one way, I don't even know how you navigate that. Yeah, me either. Uh... <laughs> Classic. You, get, you almost have to do it via text and Discord. Oh, no. Well, I I think we got a fire despite that constraint, but I don't know what to say about that. Yeah. I, um, mean... I wonder if he could set up Discord on both his phone and the computer. Um, you could you could share the screen from the computer and then uh, potentially use the audio from the... You can't at the same time. You, you, mm. you can if you have two different accounts. You, you, we have a, we, I know Falco will sometimes hop into the discord with a PC account to share game, but a phone account to do audio. Sure. Sure. Well, we obviously would give you a little bit of time if you thought you could sort it out. If you can't resolve it, we'll just fire and you'll have to play accordingly. Best of luck. Lynx makes a great point. Nothing to communicate. He's always slay. So just position accordingly. <laughs> All right, well, the lobby is full, and I don't want to hold this up any longer, so uh, Binor is the lobby boss. I think that's who I'm going to choose for our spectate to get us started here, and uh, I'm going to let them know. Go ahead and fire, and I'll start getting who, who did you say, Hor? Sorry, I missed uh, that. Binor. Binor, okay, perfect. All right, let me get that spectate set up real quick. They should be... Oops. <laughs> I didn't mean to share all of that, but whatever. That's just my Discord conversation. Every it's all public. We're not we're not doing anything fancy here. Oops, I'm not in the right. All right, I am excited. I think. Now they ought to be firing now. Let me just go ahead and. All right, I got us a code. Okay, perfect. I'm going to put this on screen and I'm going to shut up and it's a... Uh, Thank you, horse. Pleasure to listen to your work. Okay, we're in the lobby. We are spectating Binor. I don't know if you can see it on screen yet, but uh, the options for heroes are Geppetto, Sir Galahad, King Midas, and Mordred. That's a bunch of mediocrity, <laughs> I think. Uh, you know, Mordred change recently is kind of interesting. I personally like Midas. Most players don't. What's the choice? It's actually Midas. I'm a bit surprised, but I'm quite happy, Jeebus. You know, I'm, I'm actually not that surprised. Um, Midas, one of the strongest things that you can be doing is woggling. You know, you just buy two of them. Now you can get an upgraded higher tier unit. And it's a little bit easier to do that when you know who your opponent is going to be some of the time. Um, sort of allowing you to get those slays a little bit more easily. So... I, I think in a style like this, it might actually not be too bad. Okay, well, something that is uh, worth paying attention to on this hero, because a lot of people don't play it enough, but you want to pick up the characters that really get extra value when they're combined. Um, I actually play this hero a lot more than most, and, well, there's a shop. That's a shop we are likely interested in. Um, so I guess we play the spell even though we can't really win this fight, but that's okay. This is a this is a pretty solid start, uh, and as I mentioned, things that like have a benefit from upgrading aside from just stats. You upgrade a baby dragon, it's just extra stats. You upgrade a upgrade a mem, and the support effect is better. You upgrade a cup purse with a mem, uh, maybe you're generating a lot of gold in a couple of turns. Yeah, that's that's certainly true. And I I was even considering this line of selling the mem and just going with the cup purse. You get a single slay, it makes it worth it. If you miss it. It's going to be kind of tough, so it is a big gamble here. Um, I personally not only did we not attack, but we also missed the 50-50 on that, so... Yeah, I personally don't like it. I mean, I didn't really want to play the spell, and I didn't really want to lock the shot, but the Mim not only potentially helps us slay this turn, it wouldn't have mattered in this case, but sometimes it will. Um, having it going forward, I think, is nice, because the Kitty Cut Purse, the later you go in the lobby, the harder it is to slay with two attack. 
Uh, with the mem, I think it's uh, more likely enough so that it felt bad to me personally. Also, mem is something on Midas that picking up even in a couple of turns from now would be nice to have an upgraded mem for two more gold on top of sure. the mem we already had. So, uh, But weird when you get an egg offered in the shop. This is one of the spots where you uh, definitely don't want to combine the egg. I'm actually surprised that... that they didn't combine the egg here. Uh, I probably would have. Okay. Well, it's huge stats. It is huge stats if you just want to go that route. But yeah, it, it's a lot of stats. And it might be, if we can leverage the cut purse to, you know, catch up in gold, that might be a reason to run it from that aspect, you know. And it, you might be right. If we had the mim, that would be a more feasible option. Unfortunately, we lost the egg here because it was a bit too small. Ugh, not a good, not a good start at all. Horrendous, and this isn't the best shop either. Um, you know, you could go Princess White with the Crafty. It feels kind of bad, but what else are you going to do with this? Yeah, Crafty, not at its strongest on King Midas, though with the Princess White, of course, we do have the ability to get at least a treasure out of it. Um, so there is some aspect there that's not too bad. We're seeing the problem with the Cut Purse gamble where it hasn't slain at all and it's caused us to basically be extremely behind every turn of this game essentially yeah if anybody hasn't picked up on this yet we are facing our teammate here this is trons playing horde dragon that's why you see only two characters on board they're likely communicating and trying to position where we can get the the kitty cup first slay and maybe even tie the fight it should be this stage of the game relatively easy or, or easier at least to try to set up a tie. So we are able to set up a tie, which allows Trons to play Gingerbread Party pretty conveniently this turn. Um, so that's a good turn to face our teammate. I, I think that's something we haven't really talked about or even paid enough attention to. The timing of when you face your teammate, I think, is also going to be an extra bit of RNG, but also very important. Yeah, that can ab absolutely matter. And that was the kind of turn that we need to try and come back into this a little bit um i think i like picking up the cinderella a lot here um given that we have the crafty as well we have a little bit of extra gold um we can cast the spell so i don't mind the wizard's familiar here either i would yeah. even probably slam this healing potion too I, i'm well, with you i, I think i would lock. also uh consider playing the healing potion uh you don't have any gold left over at this point but it is stats on the familiar it's one step closer to a treasure on Ella, uh, as well as stats on the crafty. Since you already have the crafty, once you pick up one of those treasures, um, I don't I hate it. I might consider but locking for it. It, it feels kind of weird, right? It is definitely we weird. Took a chicken to lock for it, but I, I don't hate it here. It's um, also possible actually... if you sell the chicken and play it and roll one time, you could maybe even play another spell this turn if you find a free spell. True. So, that uh, is I, true. I, I, there are some options here. I don't mind just keeping the chicken and playing it safe. But I, I kind of wanted to be a little bit spicy, but we're spectating. It's it's easy for us to kind of uh, push in that type of direction. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we see both the um, the Piper and, at this point now, the Puffy, which I believe was uh, Mask. Um, pretty healthy here so far. Yeah, so uh, I'm looking at who's in last place. That's well, we well we got some uh, combinations here. We don't get treasures for these, but you know, a, a bossy does have a bonus effect and uh, gives an extra proc on the princess white. The upgraded familiar is pretty interesting as well if we think we're going to be keep, keeping it around. But it looks like maybe we're just going dwarves here at this point. For my money, I think I sell our hand buy the familiar and then cast the spell um possibly even just casting the spell like princess white yep i'm 100 with you and it looks like not only am i with you binor is with you as well uh cut purse is fine too I, it, it kind of doesn't matter that much which one you cast it on yep. um i would have picked white just because then if we find a kiss or something later it feels like a better hit but um i think trying to gamble on the cut purse maybe getting a second attack by not dying uh, it is also reasonable here Definitely, we want to get the stats. It, plus, what, 2-6 is, is way too many stats to hold a chicken in your hand, for sure. But we don't have the strongest board, and we're facing first place, which is the Pied Popper played by your boy here. Uh, I will say, though, this is another thing worth mentioning on this hero. If you are able to win fights, you start picking up all these golden characters, you can deal obscene amounts of damage in the early to mid game. So Absolutely it can be true. a factor. 
This donkey is going to be an absolute menace here. Yeah, not only is it a menace, it even gets a good summon with the monster book. And we talked about being able to deal a lot of damage. Well, in this case, we're going to take a lot of damage. 12 damage is a lot, and your boy here gets extra experience out of that fight as well. That sets us all the way back to 15 health and puts us in last place in the lobby. It makes that 14-14 gingerbread knight maybe playable, but uh, it makes this dwarf plan fairly uncomfortable, I have to say. I almost think you have to stay the course a little bit. It, it does feel uncomfortable. Gingerbread Knight seems fine as well as a pickup. You know, you maybe grab the Tiny, um, grab the Gingerbread Knight, and possibly even just the spell on the white now. Yeah, yeah, you certainly want to play the spell. It's going to be extra stats because we picked up the Godmother. It's going to be extra stats on the white itself, not to mention the extra stats on the familiar as well. So just debating what to sell, shuffling some things around. Um, yeah, I think no matter what we do, these next few turns are going to feel awkward. Um, maybe we still want to play more dwarves going forward, but opting not to take the tiny this turn. It's not like that's a big upgrade to our board, but it would have been extra proc on the Princess White, opting not to do that. We are facing the Headless Horseman, which is played by Pavlov. Um we need to somehow make it through a couple of turns without taking damage. It's, it's pretty tough. Um, so just to clarify for the the spectators here, kind of who the, the team pairings are. Um, so it is the King Midas uh, from Benor with Trons G. Trons G being on uh, the Horde Dragon. And then we've got your boy on... Pied Piper, which is paired with Kleck, uh, who I believe is on the... Tiger. Kleck is on Tiger. Uh, Tiger, yes. Um, and then we've got... Uh, what have we got here? Uh, we've got Pavlov, uh, who's on Horseman, and I believe that Pavlov is paired with... with Jeremiah on Jeremiah. the Jeremiah, yep. And then... We've got Hamio which is, of course, the uh, Rumpelstiltskin here, and then uh, our Puff Puff is his, uh, his partner here. So it's interesting, you know? We've, we've got some looking at the teams. Basically, one of every teammate is doing well. One of them's not doing so well. Yeah, and... This is a turn, right? This is still, as I mentioned, awkward. We are back on the dwarf path, or are we? Because look at these good characters in the shop. These are actually reasonable characters to combine. Um, and we certainly want to combine the gingerbread knight. Uh, do we want to lock the godmother? I, I don't know. Because we are so close to triggering the princess white. It feels like we want to play dwarves. But... It's a good character if you have a good board, but we don't really seem like we're going for a good board here. Yeah, I sort of hate it. Um, I don't know what benefit just giving another plus two, plus two to at this point just the Gingerbread Knight is going to do for us. Yeah. Um, obviously, we dodge the fireball a little bit because losing that buff does nothing. Um, so that's kind of convenient for us, but um, unsurprising being sort of one foot in good characters, one foot in dwarves, and then another yeah. foot in spells. It's a little too many feet, I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty slow start on Midas, and when you're in a lobby such as this, it's full of great players. It's a tournament setting, so everybody's really playing their best. And it's a team format, so it's like a little bit extra difficult when you know your teammates are communicating. Um, so we do lose to Jeremiah. We're going to hop over and spectate Jeremiah, who's on the Wonder Wallow, and we already just saw them playing Copycat. What are your overall thoughts about Copycat, Jeebus? I mean, I think Copycat overall is great, um, and I know that Jeremiah is a big fan of it as well. Um, it is a very interesting character in that it can... You know, normally you look at something like Friendly Spirit or Mummy and, and a single buff to one of those characters can, you know, be multiplied 2x, right? Because you're you're getting the effect of the character plus it's secondary. When you bring in something like Copycat, now all of a sudden you're taking that same 
you know, buff effect, and now you're multiplying it as much as four times, all of a sudden that a single buff, you know, it, on the board that we're looking at here, if we get a, a worm root, or which I suppose has been renamed now, but yeah, Jekyll's um, concoction is the new name. Yeah, the, the 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 concoction. If we're giving plus six plus six to this mummy or this friendly spirit, like that cascades into a massive amount of stats with with this copycat. Am am I missing something? Uh, wait, is this our teammate? What what am I missing here? Uh, yes, this is our teammate. Okay, this is our teammate. I was wondering why we were playing the mouse on board, but it makes sense. We play the stag because it's smaller than the familiar. We're playing the mouse. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, it actually looked like it was a lot of teammate matchups. I, I've been bouncing yeah. around a little bit. Um, it looked like Team Japan also fought their um, their respective partner that round. So. Okay, well, pretty well done, I'd say, with the information that they were able to share between each other. And here we go. Here's a blind mouse. And Krampus Slay, Three of Shields, Coin of Caron. Three of Shields, generally not that exciting. Krampus Slay, if you think you're going to win the fight, can be quite great, but you're up against first place Tiger. I'm not sure that uh, we're confident we're going to win this one. Top board Tiger can be pretty tough. You know, Tiger is one of those characters that if they're not doing super well and they're not hitting early they they take a lot of damage um it doesn't take that many hits to just be massive um for an early tiger so i would i would suspect that he's he's a bit concerned about that um so we'll, we'll have to see how strong clex board is relative to um you know this krampus lay actually being viable because krampus lay is one of those treasures where it, it literally doesn't have text if you are are behind and if you're losing, you can end up just having that two, three turns and then dying because you don't get any effect out of your tier four. Yeah, I mean, Krampus Slay is still likely the pick here. Even if we don't win this fight, it still has potential to be very good again next turn. You want to get it immediately, but without tripling the friendly spirit, it's not ideal. The good news is we do get the copycat attack, which is going to be important, right? When you're playing copycat, fight RNG is pretty important you, you always need to get that attack in we do get the attack in siren slay but but this mummy is going to do pretty nicely here and interestingly we now have the option of taking a treasure map yep. um or a monster manual which you know normally it would be a pretty snap decision but the monster manual seemed okay um we get well, but but look a at these the mummies here. Yeah, look we at these have mummies we pick up. It's a lot of mummies. That is definitely a lot of mummies. That's pretty spicy. I mean, we're already playing copycat. Uh, I don't know that the whole plan was going to be copycat mummy, but <laughs> maybe it is now. We have a lot of gold this round. Um, if we can manage to uh, pick up a couple of fives looking towards getting a tier seven treasure. I think that would give us uh, as, as wonder Waddle a very good chance of um, a, a high placement in this lobby. And, you well, know, I, tier seven treasures are pretty nice. I have to ask you, if you see a friendly spirit right now, would you take it? No. Okay. I would probably actually take this Lance here. Um, I mean, maybe. you have the Nian already, right? So just finding another Nian. Nian, Nian, Nian could do it. If we didn't already have a Nian, then uh, I, I think maybe I like playing this a bit differently. But like maybe just rolling for the Nian. By I would have actually sharded the Robin there, but I'm kind of greedy. I uh, yeah, interesting. I don't I don't know that I would have, but yeah, spicy play. Um and it's always lordy, right? It it's just always Oh yeah, I mean always. Okay. Just um the reason that sure. I would have sharded the Robin is if we hit we could have hit Holy Grail, though I suppose we would have then needed to specifically find EXP to roll on six. Um, but we could have turned the Robin potentially into a Nian um, to trigger it. Because we would have actually had two shots at it with the Forking Rod. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, if it actually turns into the Nian on the, the first flip, uh, it will then still combine the Nian. It doesn't bypass Looks like it. we hit it anyway. We did. Magic Sword, Excalibur, Round Table... Well, I think it's a very easy choice for me here. I think I'm going to go... Ah, man. Actually, I, I want to go Excalibur, but I, 
I don't know. It's it, to me, it's actually not that easy. What, what are you thinking? I think it's round table, and I don't think it's particularly close. Um, the reason being is um, all of our mummies have high health, no, or sorry, high attack, no health, and we are at twenty HP going into six next turn. Yep, wouldn't be very difficult for us to to be in trees. Um, we don't get as much benefit as Wonderwaddle out of Excalibur as other heroes. Um, cause there are other heroes that can, um, you know, pick up those chickens and, and get more value out of it. So for my money, I think, I think Excalibur, while it is very strong, can be kind of limiting, um, when we could have taken round table and then had a very clear direction going into well, six. Let me play devil's advocate a little bit, and I'm not disagreeing with anything you're saying. It makes a lot of sense. But also, what I'll say about Excalibur, even if you're playing trees, I think Excalibur trees tend to come online faster. It doesn't do as well long term. If you think you're at 20 health and you're safe for a couple of turns, I, I like going for the round table. But it does kind of tunnel you into needing to find the trees. Whereas I feel like Excalibur leaves open some flexibility. And if you get into trees, it can still come together more quickly. It's interesting. I, I mostly liked it because all of our mummies are like 24s. But yeah. I suppose that the mummies don't care nearly as much about their HP as, as exactly. other characters would. Yeah, exactly. That, that's kind of what I, I mean, was I'm just saying we could have had a round table, but you know. Yeah, but if we had round table, these burn beards wouldn't be golden. Which, you know, that means that we're not going to get any more treasures uh, now that we have Excalibur, unless we pick up a Herc, of course. We could always take a Herc and be really excited about it. So we he could. opted to pass on the... Yeah, on the burn beards. Burn beards, which I, I think is actually fine. Yeah. Um, without an Echo it already, they're kind of disappointing. Agreed. Um, but this is my problem with Excalibur. I think it doesn't do anything on a lot of boards because now we're, we're sort of rolling for dwarves, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we do, uh, like launder some chickens here. Buy and sell some chickens is going to get you gold. We have a little bit of extra gold to play with. It helps a little bit. This doesn't feel like an incredible turn. I agree. But at the same time, if we had round table, would this turn have felt better? And I don't think it would have felt Not necessarily. I, we could have picked up a couple of burn beards, which would have been, um, you know, what? 25, 40s or whatever, which what? I think would have probably been about the same power level. Um, so I'm not sure if we would have had a massive spike comparatively. Um. Uh, interesting positioning. We're actually going to put the pumpkin behind the copycat to get extra summons as opposed to extra mummy uh, hits, it looks like. That's if the copycat attacks, and it does. Um, we actually get no extra summons because our yep. um, our Nian didn't die, which is... Uh, that is a risk that we played with this line, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure Jeremiah took that into consideration. We, I mean, we do still get the pumpkin animation, even though we don't actually summon anything, and this is enough to knock out Trons and take us into the top four. We talked about we could pick up a Herc for a treasure. We could pick up a Lance for a treasure if we valued a level five. I'm not interested. I want to make something happen with this board state, but we could. Wait, did we pass a Tweedle? Yeah, I'm... It's possible that after we found the pumpkin that we're seeing that as a bigger direction than the yeah. than the dwarf, which would make sense to me as well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, this is a nice bonus. Trees combine quite well with pumpkin. So while you're working on building your tree comp, you don't mind having that pumpkin still on board because the trees that you want to pick up, in this case, the ashwood and the burn beard, exactly what you want to pick up, still work with the pumpkin. Um, and so this is a teammate fight and yes. we're at 22 health. Our teammate is on two health. So we are ha very happy to sell, to buy what we already wanted to buy out of the shop. And we don't need to play a full board. We can take the damage. In fact, it's probably better if we do take the damage here, it helps our teammate out and we can afford to take the hit. Yeah. They're, they're actually communicating, um, right now it seems. And I would say that it's pretty likely that they're both going to serve up um, some pretty mild boards. Um, they're likely going to try to get as close to a tie as they possibly can. 
Uh, that gets harder and harder the later in the game you get, but yeah, it, it, they definitely both played down on board. And wow, this works out fairly well, I'll say. Minimal damage. Uh, so minimal that at 15 health, maybe you can even survive another loss. But we're against the ghost, and we have a pretty strong setup here now with these trees. So I don't think we're too worried about losing to the ghost, but you never know. And we did end up giving them a uh, rather large mummy as well um, for their gloves of thieving. So. Oh, I missed that. Great catch. Um, it will end up likely either making their board, potentially, if they... Um, you know, feel that the mummy damage is viable or necessary, um, or, you know, just an extra gold, which is also still fine. All right, so remaining in the lobby on Rumpelstiltskin, we have Hamio, but just last lobby in round two, we saw the Bahamas Rejects team take first and second place, and Jeebus, we have Jeremiah on the Wonderwater, we have Pavlov on Horseman, both still alive, looking to take first and second again. I, I think it's already been pretty surprising that we've seen two games, and both of those two lobbies so far have ended up with the same team finishing first and second. Maybe this team thing is really working for these players. I'm surprised how well they've been able to put it, you know, into good use, like effectively, uh, just in the short amount of time that they've known that this tournament was going to happen. Yeah, you know, I I keep a pretty keen eye on the competitive Discord, um, even if I'm not always playing it. And they have been streaming an awful lot lately now that they have a reason to you know get back into the the swing of it um so i think they've been able to really leverage that that time and that effort to build up a good um like a good set of here's how we're gonna let, strategize for this type of a tournament um and you can really see that with some of the teams that have put in that effort where they're you know able to position their boards properly and um you know, make it so that they're not killing their teammates to give themselves a better position overall on average. Yeah, I love it. I was already excited for this tournament, this format, and seeing the players get excited makes me even more excited. Um, so uh, not only can we enjoy this, may maybe if this goes well enough and people are interested, maybe we can do this uh, again, maybe even in the near future. As we see this fight play out against the Ghost, um, the Pumpkin Summons aren't the best, but... Flex I think we'll be okay. Uh, upgraded versus not upgraded. Typically, the the upgraded units are going to win overall. Yeah, there is a Siren on Klex board, though. So True. if that Siren is somehow able to steal something, that, that could be a problem. Actually, it's a problem anyway. It is a big problem. Notably, the extra stats are getting us here. Um, Fairy Queen's won. From the, the Pigos. But we do get a huge discount on our spells this round. So, you know. I, I mean... I, we're down to two health. We did survive. Luckily, that fight we lost to our teammate did not put us low enough health that we died to the ghost. That that could be quite unfortunate. Uh, we do see that uh, our teammate went out in third place, Pavlov, losing to Hamio on the Rumple. So, looks like the Rumple is going to be a formidable opponent. Well, you look at this board and you, whoa, 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 whoa. You look at this shop. And then you look at the board after you buy out of this shop and you feel pretty happy about it, though. So I don't know. Are we confident going into this one? Possibly. You know, I, that was an interesting choice to cast the spell before buying anything. I might have tried to buy out the shop and then I actually think that we could have gotten both of those units. Um, both of the trees. But I think in communicating with with his partner, he's realizing that the trees maybe aren't necessarily going to be enough. Yeah, that's true. We know we have basically full information. It, it's recent as last turn because our teammate faced this opponent last turn. So that uh, shuffling that we're seeing in the positioning, the fact that we definitely want to play the Medusa is likely a factor um, based off of having that information. And we do see um, an Evil Eye, Horn of Olympus, what a great combo. Um, Pretty solid board with the Empress P, but now that it goes down to one health and they lose the back row range, not that scary. Uh, if you lose your support, uh, that'll probably do it for the Princess P. Well, so it... let's go back uh, just a little bit, Jeebus, uh, to that decision with Roundtable. And we did end up in trees. I, I want to say the Excalibur worked out quite nicely. Uh, Absolutely. So, 
Also, the golden damage that we dealt means that we didn't have to go another round here. So, I'm not saying one is definitively better than the other, but I do think it was close, going back to that decision. I, I, I don't think that was an easy decision for me. Jeremiah opting to go um, in the direction of the Excalibur. It works out nicely with the first place. And Team Bahamas Rejects, uh, with two games in a row, the Lobby 2 and Lobby number 3, absolutely crushing it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I I wanted to play the Jeebus Factor and go looking around, and it didn't dawn on me that as the one streaming, I can't be jumping from board to board, so I didn't get any insider info, but it was really interesting that, Jeebus, you were jumping around mid-game, and you saw a turn where several teams were partnered up against each other, and we ended up seeing, that was fairly late in the rounds, we ended up seeing one of those two teams, you mentioned that Team Japan was fighting one another, and we saw Hamio get up there into the top two at that round, so that certainly had to have had some sort of impact there. Yeah, again, still Team Japan, I think they, they really have nailed their um, their their team communication. Um, you know, I definitely think the Team Bahamas has been crushing it as well, and I think they've finally found their, their groove with it a little bit as well. You know, I know that a lot of the scrim practice helps for both of them, because um, I know that basically all of our players here do practice a lot on that, and, and it shows. Well, I am working on getting the fourth game organized. That was an excellent third game. I'm I'm so I'm so pleased that we saw so much copycat throughout the middle of that game. Now it made sense to get rid of the copycat when it was time to get rid of the copycat, but it was really cool watching that for a few rounds. Just it's almost like uh they were doing their best trophy hunter cosplay with all those mummies in a way. Not yeah. that Yuck or I are that excited about anything resembling trophy hunter, but it was a cool game. Yeah, I mean, it's another one of those situations where we're watching players and talking about what we like to do. The players obviously are very good at this game and had their own opinions. And, you know, all of these games, we can predict some of the things they're going to do, but we, we can't predict everything they're going to do. And they have sometimes more information than we even have as we're watching these lobbies. So this is fun to try to keep up with their thoughts. And, and you know, casting with Jeebus is always a pleasure as well. Yeah, I'm surprised that we haven't seen anybody playing... Uh, trophy hunter you could just you know grab a pig you serve it up yep. in the front get some slays feed gold to your teammate you know that's maybe a little cute but uh it sounds like it would be really good content hint 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 i don't want to encourage trophy hunter gameplay here jeebus but uh, what you're saying i'm encouraging makes a lot of sense. i'm encouraging just turbo gold farming to your teammate uh, not specifically the Trophy Hunter gameplay. Oh, okay. oh, oh the Reasonable. prize. Okay. Well, on Trophy Hunter note, let's uh, go and look at the scores. <laughs> no, that, that that would be funny to see, though, if we got some prize pick Trophy Hunter play. So we're looking at uh, Team Bahamas sitting in the lead at 42 points. We got the stream team right behind at 36. We got Team Japan right behind at 31. And we got Team Puff Puff at 14 points right now. So these are our totals at the moment going into game four. Oh, it's looking like Team Puff Puff uh, probably isn't going to be able to get there. Definitely isn't going to be able to get there. But any of the other three teams have a shot. Um, without doing any math, maybe it's possible that we end up in a tie, in which case we would have one more game after this one. But likely this is going to be our last game, our last round coming up. Um, and yeah, I think we have three teams that are absolutely in it. You know, for Team Japan to get there, Jeebus mentioned how well they t t tend to be and seem to be playing together. But they're going to need some help because they need the teams that are ahead of them to not perform well. I'm assuming that we know who the teams are going to be uh, serving up this round. Is that correct? We do because we're down to the last two people on each team who have not played twice because everybody plays twice. So now Everybody plays twice, except in the case of a tie break, and then we would, correct. Um, they would be able to put whomever. Yeah, and that could be interesting as well. If we get a tie, then it could be a lot of fun because uh, what we plan on doing, if there's a two-way tie, we're going to plan on having one single lobby with all four players from each team in the same lobby. And I can only imagine the voice chat going on when you're in a lobby with four people trying to work together. That would be pure chaos. It would be a little chaotic. Probably would feel a little bit more like a viewer lobby than... Uh than a, a super competitive because it, it's gonna feel really weird when you're you know you face a teammate four rounds in a row like 
are you putting your board up there? Are yeah. you trying to like, is everybody buying pigs and pollies to just try and, um, you know, be strong against the other rounds? Who knows? It could be, it, it could be pretty interesting. I don't know that we're going to find a tie, but I really want to see it now. Now that you're talking well, about Well, the players it. better figure that out because I want to see it. So, you know, get your shit together. All right. All right so <laughs> we need these teams to coordinate amongst each other to figure out how to tie the overall score is what we're saying. Yeah, if, if you're looking like there's a tie possible, just, you know, I wouldn't say throw the game, but, like, <laughs> navigate it in such a way that there's a tie so we can get a fifth one. I know Yuck didn't want to do a lot of math. I did a little math, and I'll say uh, Bahamas team starting up with six more points than everybody else, the the next closest team. That's that's probably the position you want to be in. Yeah, that they're obviously in the lead. and. They don't necessarily need to dominate the lobby. We, we talk about in tournaments, like normal tournaments that aren't team-oriented. You look at your standing, and that can affect your gameplay. You know, um, we're not doing like a race format or anything where you have to win the final lobby to win. So if you're looking at your points, just knowing what you need to do to finish in first place, uh, you know, can impact things that you do throughout. It gets a little more complicated here when we're doing a team format. There are more points available in each round. Um, and there's just more going on in general. So we'll, we'll try to keep an eye on that, follow along the storylines as best we can. Good news. I mean, Oh, go ahead, Jeebus. Go ahead. No, no, you first, you first. I, I was just going to say some quick math on it says, that, you know, the most points you can get in a round is 18. That's if, you know, both of your teammates do first and second. So if they're already up by six for the Bahamas rejects, that means that as long as they lock up 13 points, um, that would guarantee them... Uh, a, a, a victory there, which 13 points. That, that's a third and a fourth place, right? That's, that, that's... Un, unmanageable. You know, if, if both of their teammates get into top four, then that secures it. You know, it gets a little murkier if, if the, um, if the stream team doesn't make both of them in the top four, because then all of a sudden that number drops down quite a bit. So you're right. They are in a pretty good position. All right, well, we have our lobby organized. Everybody is in, so I'm uh, about to tell them to kick off the action, uh, and then we're going to hop into game four. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, perfect. Jeebus, uh, stick around, of course. We'll bring you in after this game. Uh, whether or not we have a tiebreaker, we'll talk about that shortly. We're all kind of hoping for a tiebreaker, but if not, we'll still talk about this last game as well as the tournament as a whole. So thank you again, Jeebus. A pleasure casting with you as we get into round number four. And our lobby boss this time around is Terrifal. Oh, um, spectating the lobby. I'm, I don't know for a fact that it started up because we're not watching them in Discord. So I'm just waiting until it latches on to one of the people that I can spectate. Here, let me let me test this this way. There we go. And I have a new code for us, and we can start to watch. And I said Terathel is who we will watch first off. Let me get Terathel on the screen. There we go. We're looking at a hero select yuck. We got Pup the Magic Dragon, Muerte, Skip the Time Skipper, and Beauty. Okay. Uh, I like Pup, but it's certainly not a priority pick here. Skip can be fun, but, you know, pretty risky. Uh, and Beauty is just solid. It, it's great in the late game. It's solid in the mid game. I'd say probably Beauty, but but there's a part of me that wants to play Skip here. And it looks like Skip is the choice. All right. I, I'm excited to see a little bit of Skip here. I don't know. That would not have been a batch of heroes that I would have felt strongly about any of them. I might have selected Beauty myself, but I don't feel overly confident playing Beauty. So... I'm hoping we get to see some maybe early feasting, maybe early Chupacabra action going on here with Skip. All right. Well, while we have a moment, since there's nothing to talk about on turn one with Skip, I'm looking at the teams, and the team that is in first place overall is uh, the Bahamas Rejects. That's Wait for Godot, who's playing Trash Panda, and we have Lucas Zazi, who's playing Share Bear in this lobby. So we definitely have to keep a close eye on those two. Yeah, definitely do. I'm, I'm looking at our, our duos that we got this time around. So uh, for the stream team, a.k.a. your boy, we got... Your boy and Duke. Uh, and let's take a gander. Oh, we are looking at three interesting... Before before we look at that, let's look at this shop. 
We definitely like it, and I don't mind this lock. Do we go for the Ogre Princess this turn? I think that's where I'm leaning. You definitely go for the Ogre Princess. Uh, I, you'd like the Shadow Assassin? Do you lock again? Because the Jekyll's Concoction is such a good spell oh, here. Yeah, but I didn't even see that. It's, it's hard to spend gold on spells when you're skipped. Uh, maybe if we slay with the Ogre this turn, maybe we can sell whatever it gives us if it's not something we want to keep, and then we can buy and play the spell. So this slay is really important, I feel like, and we don't, don't get, get it. it. Well, then the other uh, thing we could do here is we could buy the Jekyll's Concoction on the Ogre Princess and just throw a different two drop down, right? And then could. we could save that Shadow Assassin one more turn if we really like it. And I think I really like it, but I really like Shadow Assassin, so... Yeah, and Shadow Assassin could scale if you get an Ogre Princess Slay. And, and also, you have to remember that next turn, you only have five gold. So if you don't get a Slay next turn, next turn, if you want to play a two-cost spell, can be, you know, interesting, to say the least. So I don't know what we're doing here. We buy the Shadow Assassin. We did not cycle a two-drop out of the shop, which could have been an option. Um, it looks like, oh, we must be playing our teammate. We are absolutely fighting our teammate here. Uh, I was just, uh, because I was looking at, you know, your boy and Duke. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick scan. So we got Duke on fates and your boy is playing mask. Not surprised. Your boy loves mask. So that's, that's one team. Obviously we've got has no name on Pied Piper and Terrafell. Another team sitting here on skip. Did we line up? Oh, not quite a tie, but as close to one as you could get. One health off. All right, well, let's back away from the action just a moment here, Horace, as we see an interesting shot. But we, we just got a raid from Matt Oblivium. Thank you, Matt, for the raid. And I want to mention to the people that are just tuning in what's going on here because it's probably confusing at this point. Please do, If yeah. you don't already know, we're, uh, we're hosting a tournament. It's actually a team format tournament story we're all not typically a team game, but we have it set up where we have teams here. So there are two players from each team in this lobby. This is our final lobby of the day, unless we need tiebreakers. So in that last fight, you saw those two players were teammates, us and the opponent that we were facing, trying to work together, communicating together to figure out the best way to position, adds a new element to the game. Also, thank you again, Matt, and welcome, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Matt. Yeah, absolutely glad you're all here to see this. We're, we're having fun. It's It's been interesting so far, and I don't know what key takeaways will be taken away from this, but it's just been fun. That, that's been my biggest key takeaway thus far. Yeah, definitely been fun. And speaking of fun, we have a couple of Ogre Princesses on skip. If we can get some slays here, this could be a very fun turn going into level four. So we took a look at, well... We're not looking like we're getting a lot of Ogre Princess Slays here, and losing no. our range there means we don't get through anything else. That's a big board over there on that Share Bear. Yeah, and that Share Bear is Lucas, who is on the team that is currently in the lead points We wise. should take a look so at that, we... because it's Lucas Zazi on the Share Bear and Godot. Who is yeah. Godot playing right Trash now? Panda Trash Panda is Godot. Okay. And then our last pair, of course, is Hamio and Hochoge. Hamio on Morgan, and then uh, Hochoge is playing... Fallen Angel. For some reason, that Severed Soul art threw me for a second there. Sure, yeah. Um, okay, we've got a turn ahead of us that has another Jekyll's Concoction that we would love to play. It's so good. It's so good specifically on these characters. But we only have seven gold to work with. I, I think I could personally justify playing the Jekyll's Concoction and rolling it and hoping we hit a four drop in the next shot. I kind of really like that too yeah i think that's the way i want to navigate the spot i just i like dr jekyll's concoction a lot i have a hard time letting him go uh, this Ooh, makes some okay. sense too okay. we're, we're making some white yeah, progress sure. we got a little bit of a buff from the bossies on the tiny not the most important thing in the universe but why not you know actually on second look maybe i like this better it, it's not the play that i noticed but it works pretty well you get a couple of procs on the princess white and it's decently strong on board it's nothing crazy but it's also a good economy you buy a couple of characters, and then now it makes it a little bit easier to triple next turn um, because we can still fill the full board after tripling. Yuck, I'm getting uh, some flavor text from Jeebus on the side here, and I kind of want Jeebus to come in and tell us what was going on. Yeah, let's do it. Jeebus, you there? I am, yeah. You were just telling me something interesting about your boy. Yeah, you know, you're aware of his propensity towards leading slay your boy likes and, to oh, slay yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he's done it a few times and i feel like there's a spicy one coming up um he's got a dragon's nest and has turned into celestial tiger and he also has a spinning gold in his hand from being a rumple uh very briefly so oh wow <laughs> i suspect he's gonna 
probably sell his whole board and uh, turn it all into gold and then uh, maybe hit some uh, some dragons, which will be very exciting. Well, knowing your boy as well as I do, he won't be happy with that bounty board, but he's probably very happy oh, right now. Your boy's probably incredible. smiling. This this is a if if your boy got to do that this game, this has been a good game for your boy, I gotta guess. Wow. All right, yeah, thanks for that information, Jeebus. Uh we definitely want to keep an eye on that. Uh in the meantime, we pick up fancy pants, which is, you know, it's okay. Uh this ogre princess, if he can slay now, it's golden, it gives us a level four character, which could help us you know, turn this board into something stronger. You know, we have some dwarves. We're making progress on the Princess White. Um, and, and our board is decently sized. It's kind of but... wild at this stage of the game to find a whole shop where you think, I can use that whole shop. And yeah. Sarathel made use of that entire shop this last turn. Will we get the pig? Um, we will not. Ah, we were not quite big not enough quite. the fates there. Not totally shocked. The fates often starts off very stable and has that kind of almost grace period of the game. Not always, but often, where they're just in good shape. And I think that's what we're well, looking at right now. Of course, we did pick up an Ogre Princess Slay, which gave us an Arthur. Um, we have another it, Arthur. It now. doesn't look like it fits that well with the dwarves, but it worked quite nicely with the Ogre. And now there's another Arthur. After playing Experience, I mean, it didn't feel like this was a Royals comp, and it looks like we're opting not to take the second Arthur. I don't mind but... passing it. But, but let even let me even back up to playing the experience. Playing experience on skip is not always something I feel comfortable doing. We haven't had the best start. It's been okay. I think you can justify playing it, but I think that one could have gone either way. How do you feel just about the experience here? I was kind of surprised, but I it's all it's all part of my own personal you know skip biases or thoughts. Uh, I often think that I'm not going to get a treasure for a long, long time on this hero, and I really need to focus on the board, focus on the board, focus on the board. I'm not looking for spells. I'm not looking to get extra XP, but it fit really well in that spot, and if we can not take a lot of damage and then all of a sudden we find a few things that fit together in our board, I, I don't know. I'm on the fence on it. I think it's risky, but I think it's not without its reward, too. Well, it's not like it's the only thing we did this turn. We also picked up Fanny, which is quite nice on this board. And now we are only one dwarf away from getting a level three treasure from Princess White. So I have to imagine we're really going to hope to pick up a dwarf or, or maybe multiple dwarves next turn. Um, now, the question is, can we make it out of this fight without taking any damage? And it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. No, that uh, big sure shot's looking like it's going to be a pretty effective blocker for all the rest of Terathel's characters over here. And then the uh, big bird to clean up in the back just in case. So we're not going to win this one, but we don't take a ton. Yeah, no golden characters on that board. So we don't take a ton of damage. And how about maybe even a couple of treasures here? We, uh, we combine the bossy. We're going to get a level two, followed by a level three from the Princess White. It's Spinning Wheel is Monster Manual with the Ogre Princess, but it doesn't necessarily seem like it fits perfectly. So we go with sandals. Got ourselves some fancy new shoes. Now we got a Ring of Thunder, a Haunted Helm, a Deep Stone Mine. Now, if we want to play Dwarves, Haunted Helm is a little bit more effective than on other tribes because Angry often on this level likes to be up front. So I could see yeah, but... considering that, but obviously there is a treasure that says Dwarf in it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. You beat me to it. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Haunted Helm can be quite nice uh, when you're playing dwarves as opposed to other comps. But if you're playing dwarves, it just deep stone mine. Uh, pretty easy pick. Pick up another fanny here. This is a pretty decent dwarf board. Yeah. Now, we're never going to be super happy about it until we get to level six and find Lordy. Um, I have a thought for you. This... Okay. Nine attack is not going to get a slay, right? In position one, it just this ogre princess has been low value here. What about yeah. sticking that bossy on the front line? Maybe put that in four, put the shadow assassin in one, and stick that ogre back in five. We've gotten, I don't think we've slayed since we've upgraded the ogre because no, it sat in slot actually, one and it hasn't been able to kill. How about slot one shadow assassin just to try to get the ranged attack because it's a little bit stronger on board and a slot two ogre princess, um, which uh, yeah. maybe you soften something up with uh, the ranged attack before it attacks. I think that's the way I would go. Well, here. we did get a 50-50 and we hit it this time around. Uh, All right, well, or we're both wrong and we just leave it in slot one and get the slay and we're real happy about it. I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased about it personally. Now we needed to get that Medusa, but we also need to get that big ranged. Oh, wow, we tie. Taking out the yeah, Robinwood okay with, with that 50-50 there, allowing us to not take damage and preventing, uh, who is that on the Trash Panda? That's Godot. Preventing Godot from getting the extra XP is nice too. 
Well, and uh, also, let's check back in. Uh, we see the Share Bear played by Lucas uh, in eighth place right now on nine health. That is our team that's in first place. If we have one of their players go out early in, say, seventh or eighth place, that opens up the door for some of these other teams to maybe uh, overtake them in points. Yeah, we got Godot and Lucas bookending this lobby health-wise, and that's our top team, right? Yeah, it is. Um, and while we're waiting to see how that plays out, we are facing who we were talking about or who Jeebus was talking about just a little while ago. That's your boy on the Tiger. And we know we're setting up with the Dragon's Nest and, and some Slay stuff potentially. Uh, I'm imagining this board we're facing is going to be terrifying. And if there are dragons, maybe even lightning dragons, that could be extremely effective against our back row that includes fannies and bossy. It absolutely can. I got I got to say something here. I got to say hi ho. <laughs> Just I got to do it. That was mandatory. Got to do well it. We hi ho. I got to do it. <laughs> got to do it. Uh, all right, we did combine the fanny, forking rod, sky castle deck of many things. Uh, you got to choose quickly. Ops to take deck of many things over sandals, I believe. Is what we replaced there? Yeah, yep, we did. We replaced the sandals. Uh, just a little bit of deck spell scam. Hope, hopefully helps us out. Now we got your boy with all the dragons coming down. And your boy's got one each of all the dragons of every flavor he could have his hands on right now. Well, more than one of the feasting, because guess what? Feast! Oh, baby. I knew I'd get another opportunity and not miss it. We got there. Your boy's uh, okay. having a that fun board, one. That board is as scary as we thought it would be. We're down to six health. Nobody died that round, though. We have several players that are on low health. And we had uh, everybody's still in it. Hojo job bumping down actually a little bit Wait, lower is, now. Wait, is this our teammate horse that we're facing? This is... Well, we gotta... We gotta figure out this dream first. Trophy Mask of Ella Gwen. Looks like we're opting for Gwen. Makes sense. We are facing Has No Name. This is our teammate. We are about to yeah. watch a team fight. So... At six health, you kind of want your teammate to go easy on you, but when your teammate only has 13 health, it may not be the easiest thing for them to go easy on you because they obviously have to worry about their own state and status within the game. Uh, maybe we see some things repositioned or moved around. I'm sure they're communicating and trying to figure it out. With limited time, it's hard to do. The good news is you've spent the majority of your gold, so now you can focus on how to position and wow, this is spicy. On six health, removing things from board, are they going to be able to figure out how to tie? Or, or we're, surely we're not intentionally losing here. So I think they're trying to tie. I am loving that we sold two things to make bench space so that we could more efficiently go for this tie. And you can, you can just see the five head energy going on behind the scenes here. You can see it play out as all this positioning and it's impossible to know what you're supposed to do. Oh, we get a random piggo. I'm guessing oh, that was not part of the equation. Things. No, you can't account for that. <laughs> uh, maybe it's okay. Oh. I mean... Well, it's not a KO. We're going to leave Piper on one. That That's okay. That's okay. It, I mean, it's not ideal. You'd love to have a tie. But we can live with that, oh, right? And we've Both lost players a player. still alive. We've lost Hoge Hoge. We did. Yeah, we did lose Hoge Hoge. Um, we have now a number of players in danger of dying this round. Um, we have a knighthood in hand, but nothing currently that we really want to play it on. I mean, we have an Oni, but, you know, only the one other monster. Wow. So this is difficult. You know, there's a Pigo, but we kind of need to knighthood something this turn as well. We know that deck likes making Pigos, so, well, you know, we, we might have had two in the hopper if we'd decided to cast that last one but yeah we do want to cast this knighthood ideally we wanted to cast it probably on a lordy and we didn't see one so we did not know putting it on I the mean, oni feels funny we picked up a tweedle and it looks like maybe a second tweedle that we're prepping to buy here but which is okay right we, we want those things but oh, no. it's not the power spike of the lordy that you really really want to go for here i don't know if this is going to be enough you i think you might as well use the knighthood somewhere it's not ideal. You really want to save it for a lordy, but you also gotta not die. Yeah, I. We almost wish we had that echo in retrospect instead of this oni or just something. Although, did the oni come from the ogre? I was not watching that closely. Um, or we gifted. This? We didn't buy it. We didn't okay, buy it. That much I can it. tell you. Yeah. Then in that case, I, it, it's just awkward. It just is, and there's not a lot right, that well, we can do here. We just gotta we're, hope we live. 
Yeah, we're going to hope we live. And, you know, if we live and still have the knighthood after this round, we'll be very happy that we held on to it. So that's a big if, though. Let's see if we can make it. One bit of good news we're seeing here. No pumpkin. No pumpkin on the share bear board. And that's going to help us out quite a bit. Now, we do lose both of our Tweedles to scam effects. But this we Oni do. fights up well against the queen. The queen being the largest thing left on that side of the board. So we're okay here. Okay. Wow. This is a this is a big fight. Also, uh, that's Lucas uh, on the share bear that we just knocked out, yeah. who is on the team that was in the lead. And because of tiebreakers, Lucas actually gets seventh place, and we get the ghost who's in sixth. So holding on to this knighthood is looking brilliant it after that played out this way. Really is, and th it could not be a better time for us to get a ghost fight. We make a ghost and then immediately get a ghost, and we need a ghost right now. We need. We need a little bit of time, or we need we need something to come together, and we could use hopefully an easier fight. Now these ghost fights are not always easier fights. There, there, there are some storylines that we're not able to track super easily while we're spectating Terathol here, because now that we've lost Lucas in seventh place, um, that team is in the lead. His teammate being Wait for Godot, who's still alive, but we have the second place team, your boy here in Duke Silver on Tiger and Fates respectively, both not only alive looking like they're having a great game so far so i think there might be an opportunity here uh with lucas going out early in the lobby for the stream team to step in and and uh pass them in points here yeah absolutely now this is awkward because we combined a tweedle to make an upgrade but we don't have uh anything else to put in the board slot so we're just hoping that you know we're just bigger than the ghost here which we might be that's well, a big tweedle as long as there's no medusa over there it could carry by itself yeah uh, one Medusa, I think, is terrifying, um, so we hope not to see one, uh, and we don't. I think we're probably okay against this. Yeah. No big scams, nothing that can take care of our Tweedle. All right, we still need to find something to use that Knighthood on next turn. Uh, obviously, we want that to be a Lordy. Yeah, I would love to have some angle towards stats that doesn't have to rely on dwarves, but I just... There's it, how are we going to get, you know, 12 gold worth of one ash and one burn beard all in the same turn and then the next turn get another ash and a echo wood. It, it's just it's so unrealistic. So, yeah, we now to the point where I we think we want Lordy bad enough. We can't. No, we can't really. No, we can't. I mean, if we combine, we, we can't even fill up our board this turn. Yeah, we're going to play five characters. There, there's just no way we can't do it. Oh, we no. have to hope we get lucky. We have seven gold left. We. We need one roll into something that we want to play and knighthood. Even an uh, echo feels... at least would be catching close to like, say, what, 100 attack, 70-ish health off of this Tweedle when it flips. Even an echo would get pretty sizable here. Well, you can't be too picky at this point. Um, oh, no. And this shop is not it. We didn't find the Lordy. So I, I, I think this is going to be the end. Um, we know uh, your boy here was quite strong. So we already lost... Terathel's teammate has no name went out in fifth um it looks like we are going to get out down to the top three and I, I wonder what the math is going to be so with Lucas gaining two points here they were what six points ahead that team starting this round so with Lucas getting two points that puts them eight points ahead oh, no with oh I, I think this is still up in the air oh no we we've knighthooded a monster book we just we need scam that's all we got and we knew there were dragons so we put the monster yeah. book in the back but it's not gonna get to do anything because of that pigo man a random minus 10 but everything in the back line of your boy's board is too healthy that empress really seals the deal here those babas are huge um okay so as we get knocked out here i will say without doing all of the math if the stream team gets first and second place they are gonna win if they can manage to not Godot out, they will win the overall. So these two players, Duke Silver and your boy here, are teamed up against Wait for Godot. Doesn't matter which player knocks them out. Um, now, I don't know if Wait for Godot gets first. I think they win. Maybe somebody can help me with the math here. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to be looking at the math at the moment. But yeah, if, yeah there's if, a lot if, going on to try If someone to can figure that out and let us know for sure, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to know. So you're, you're thinking that there's a shot for Stream Team to take this if they knock Godot out in third? Yeah, for sure. If Stream Team finishes first and second, they win the overall. Yeah, that much I've, I've sorted out. Um, 
but I haven't done all of the math to figure out what happens if Godot finishes first or second, if, if there's any, uh, any chance. So your boy, we know, was running Dragon's Nest earlier because Jeebus caught that. Now, obviously, still got the dragons, no longer got the nest. The feaster's not feasting anymore. We got a bigger slay board going on here. But we don't actually have slay on our position one character. We don't actually have slay on our Empress P. We're also against our teammate here. So this is Duke Silver on Fates. This is your boy here who we're spectating on Tiger, and that's Wait for Godot on Trash Panda. So um, Fates and Tiger here are teammates. So it looks like that's why we run an empty board spot here. We're not trying to play our strongest board, it seems. Wow, and Duke actually, similar problems that Terathel was having earlier. We got a dwarf board. We got an Alordi. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is actually great positioning to leave the Medusa in the back when you know that there's going to be a Yorm potentially still alive there to deal with. So I, I think this is very well played by the teammates. What I will say is Duke's board is not incredibly strong, but sending minimal damage is really next level here because we know Horde Dragon can do some really great things in the late game with treasures. They just need time, right? Yeah. So now we want to play our strongest board against the actual opponent, uh, if you will, the uh, Trash Panda played by Godot. So we, we want to knock Godot out. That, that's the goal. That if, was... If we can... That was almost artistic how close they were able to make that. Now, obviously, it was down to a few 50-50s at the end there to not shoot that Medusa, to let Medusa take out a couple of the, you know, the Babas on the back line there. But it was yeah. beautiful, actually, seeing how close that fight ended up in the end with so many things going on all at once. The other thing that, that comes to mind that I'm thinking about is, I wonder how Godot's feeling. You're, you're in the top three, but you know the other two have full information, and they're they're talking, and they're figuring out how to beat you specifically. Godot has well, a target on be, his back. You have to be feeling outnumbered, at the very least. Uh, we could dream, and we do dream, so we don't have any low-level treasures other than the, the steed, which it doesn't look like we're going to get value from. We're on exactly Morgan 20 does give health. us a level 6 treasure. Oh, we take the yeah. Morgan. Okay. That makes sense to yeah. me. E Mimic Spear Easy book. Morgan. Ninth Book of Merlin doesn't fit. We could get a few free spells from our Babas. Yeah, Spear, pretty obvious choice. Uh, again, now it is a little bit interesting that your first couple of characters don't have Slay and you're running double Yorm. Um, okay, I mean, this is still a pretty good board. It's not the dream board, though. Uh, and we have a Doom Breath, but our opponent has a Soul Tack. I guess it doesn't matter when it gets Medusa. I gotta imagine between all the teammates and everything else, Godot probably knew about those dragons about three years ago by now, right? That soul tack makes all the sense to see at this stage of the game. But these yards right, are getting big. Steve, we are representing lethal damage here. There is a Medusa in the back row that's going to be able to kill one of these Yorms, or at least take it out of the golden damage that it represented. But it, it like this has to be scary for Godot. Oh, absolutely has to be terrifying for Godot. Now, we've got that Medusa left to deal with that other Yorm, but will it get a chance and will it even matter? You know, after it's well, done, will we have anything left to deal with these Babas? But we do live, I suppose, if it's just the Babas. So we're fine with this. All right. Now we need to switch uh, switch over, actually, Horse. We need to switch over. Let's uh, switch to Duke on the Horde Dragon. Okay. Right? Because if Duke knocks out Godot, then we know they win, right? Sure. Absolutely. Oops. So as commentators, we're not rooting against Godot uh, at all. Uh, Godot trying to hang in there and we know this board was struggling to piece it together as we switch over and it looks like still struggling to piece an actual comp together. I I'm pretty sure Duke lost to the ghost. Ah, if I hadn't swapped just now, I would have had that information because the, the trackers are, are kicking in for me as long as I stay there, but I can't tell for sure. I think so though. I don't think Duke yeah. was at three. I'm, I'm fairly certain that we took damage from the ghost and it, it, it makes sense why this board is a board that in a ladder lobby you would be happy just to be in the top three i think um this is not the dream but you know when your comp isn't coming together play some medusas you know that's my strategy it, i think what we saw here really with uh with the with this horde dragon board was we saw a bunch of dwarves last time we looked at it, a bunch of upgraded so i have to imagine we rode a bunch of upgraded dwarves like we got a very powerful mid-game board but then we got to level six and we didn't find a lordy and it just kind of left us sitting there going what do we do now oh and you notice the soul tax gone godot is definitely yeah. playing around the dragons one way and the other exactly right yeah knows uh, or has enough information to know what you're up against or at least have a pretty good idea now there's a golden pumpkin that needs to clean up 
Not too much. The Drax Saber is doing some work over here, but I don't know if it's going to be able to do enough. Fortunately, the no. Siren doesn't get to attack. Unfortunately, that's it for Duke. Well, I feel like we've been kind of uh, going against Wait for Godot. What do you think if we spectate from Wait for Godot's angle and see if we can uh, play... Like, if Godot, with us cheering him along, can play devil's advocate here, kind of, and out-survive the two players that he was against. Yeah, let's do it. I'm looking at Godot right now, and we just saw it. And what are we looking for? We got a Wanda Weirding on Trash Panda, a.k.a. Potion Master here. So I got to imagine Pigomorph is high on our list. Now, we know we're going up against the Dragon's Morgan. And if we hit... Your boy playing Morgan here. If we do damage to your boy and we take your boy down to five, we're just feeding your boy more treasures. Very curious how this one's going to play out. Oh, and it looked like we, we had a upgraded Oni Tyrant last turn. Looks like that was the Lance, but mixed. I'm trying to do some math here. That's why I got quiet. You're seeing if we can uh, end up in a tie scenario here, depending on uh, how this plays out? I think whoever wins... That that team wins. Oh, really? I think. I could be wrong here, so I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. But I, I think so. Godot has a rope running. Eight gold left floating. Waiting to see. Staring at something And here. I, I think it's close. I, I think it ah. could be a win just by one point. Wow, this is spicy. I, I, we couldn't draw it up any other way. We, we know your boy has such a powerful comp. And oh, and that Doomy B hit that takes out the pumpkin. That might do it. We know that thing, that, that Empress doesn't have Slay. Now, this Yorm's gonna get big, but we got Medusa for yeah, that. Yeah, but Medusa's, wait, that doesn't We do have a Medusa for that We still have Baba. another Medusa. Well, one Medusa down. It's a big 50-50. Baba has 50 -50. to hit Medusa. It does. Oh, yeah, boy. 50-50 for your boy here. Getting the 50-50s yeah, in the end. Hold on, before we give the official announcement, we're gonna we're gonna let Tim uh, check the scores, update the scores. We will report back. I'm pretty sure that final fight was to determine the the winning team, though. So you boy and wait for Godot. How you couldn't script it better, no, Horse Steve. Because not only did it come down to the wire, those are team captains. Those two teams are team captains. They are. That's right. Representing their teams. Uh, also, they're they're both team yuck. Just saying. Well, I'm 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 anxiously awaiting getting the final scorecard here. So we're waiting on. Uh, Tim is in the background updating that for us. I want to I want to see what the official final score is here. All right, and we're gonna bring Jeebus back in and uh, get some thoughts from Jeebus on that game. with this, but I could be wrong. You... It is still ten points for first and eight for second, six for third, right? Absolutely, it is. No, no, right. seven for third. It's ten, eight, seven, seven six. For third. Okay, then, yeah, then it's over. <laughs> yeah, because you, you were looking for the tie angle, and I wish. I was trying really hard. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I wish. No, it's 10, 8, 7, 6 for okay. first, second, third, fourth. Yeah. Then it looks like they took it. We got Man, what a nail-biter. We got Tim over here telling us 10 to 15 minutes, and I'm, I'm, I'm too antsy. I'm too antsy, Tim. <laughs> I wanna, I, we got Oh, man. I'm, I'm waiting for these Wait. finals. That, that, this, was, this was a good time. I, I don't know how y'all how you guys feeling right now. I'm honestly, I'm, I, it's not really, I don't know, is it adrenaline? I'm, I'm pumped. <laughs> I'm pumped. And we were just spectating, right? So the players have to have had an absolute blast. And another fun thing that comes from this team element, not only were the final two players that were involved in that combat on the edge of their seat, their teams, I'm sure we're also really watching closely and cheering them along and hoping for the best. Um, that That's just a new element that, uh, this has been a lot of fun to test it out, try it out, and explore the different possibilities. And I'll say again what I said earlier. I'm very impressed and surprised by how quickly players adjusted to this being like a concept and a strategy. I think these teams did very well. Jeebus mentioned multiple times that Team Japan was playing very well together. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't even in the top two teams, yet they were playing incredibly well. Um, and we see like different angles and different options. Uh, just overall fantastic. I, I I agree with and mirror everything you're saying. Uh, just tons of fun and tons of fun to see everybody react. We have final scores. We have final scores. It looks like by one point, the stream team has taken it with 53 points over the Bahamas team with 52 points. Oh my. I can't believe it came down that close in the end. 
I never would have imagined, honestly. I mean, we talked about tiebreakers just in case. It, it seemed like a long shot w with this type of format. We almost got to a tie. We got down to a one-point victory. And again, the fact that that came down to two team captains in the top two to determine the winning team, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I'm also I'm gonna I'm gonna just pause on Terathel's custom made puff puff hat one more time because Terathel Terathel deserves praise for making this puff puff hat for this show. Time flies. This is great. Well done. Love it, Terathel. Well done. Well, what do you think about you know, what do you think about getting a uh, summer all of the stream team in here to chat with us for just a moment before we call it a day? Boom and a boom and a boom boom boom. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm down. Getting all of them might be a bit much. Uh, it's probably chaotic, chaos. perhaps. Uh, stream team, I see y'all are hanging out in the Discord. I wonder who would like to come talk with us. <laughs> it is kind of classic Team Bahamas to take an L, though, right at the end. Oh. <laughs> <Boom>. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Your boy's mic doesn't work. Well, we could, we could always get Duke in here. Duke was part of that. Icarus, click. Icarus, Duke, click. Yeah. One of y'all, we want to talk to you. Who who wants to I, who wants to talk to us? We want a winner's I do interview. I feel like it was a good call to say that his mic not working was irrelevant because he was just going to force Slay anyway. <laughs> um, and we and did. did see. You know, about 15 minutes ago or so, I said, "Hey, he got Dragon's Nest, and he turned into Tiger. He's going to play Slay." Uh, and he did, and then he won. So, you know, true. I'm not seeing any volunteers. I'm just going to grab Click. Click, come join us for a moment. Hello, Click. Oh, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Click, what was it like? Uh, it was great. How? Uh, uh, okay. How was it in comparison <laughs> so, to like tournaments you played in the past? It, it was. It was a very interesting format. Not only like with what I'm doing with my team, but obviously seeing what other people are doing. Right? Like, there were so many instances where other people were going to die and they cheat out, you know, one, two, three higher placements because, you know, we're, we're playing like close to empty boards against each other. It's really cool stuff. How much of a factor was it that you weren't able to communicate apparently with your boy in the game together? Like, like that had to feel like a big disadvantage at the time. Um, I felt like it was going to be a bigger di disadvantage than it actually ended up being. But like, we only fought each other, I believe once uh, as far as me. Uh, I don't know how much of a factor it was with the other guys. It, it was a little straining, but we were able to communicate through text and whatnot, and it ended up working out okay. Yeah, you've uh, done... All right, I have one one other thought here real quick, Click, is I was very impressed with how well the teams adapted to a team format. Um, I, I don't know how much uh, time teams put into planning or theory crafting or practicing or whatever. Uh, were you surprised at how well things went? Uh, I know you all had been preparing for this, but uh, what are your thoughts about kind of just how well it seemed to go for the first attempt at a team format? Uh, I'm not surprised, actually, at how well everybody adapted to it, because, I mean, like, look at all the people that were in the tournament. Like, these are all very notable and very smart and very good players. Um, and some, some teams had a little bit more practice than others. For instance, like, my team had very little practice. But seeing what all the other teams were doing and whatnot uh, in scrims and, and in other cases when I was just kind of chilling on the side uh, was really fun to watch. Really interesting format for sure. It was a lot of fun. Well, thank you for thank you for wanting to play. I, I, I know you ended up not captaining your team, but you hopped on a team anyway. I, I think I think and not just to you, Click, but really for everybody for coming out oh thanks thanks for hosting the tournament i've been dying for like some sort of you know competitive environment it ladder can be a little boring you know especially since it's not really thriving lately that was one of the fun oh, things wow. that we saw was the competitive discord becoming active again leading up to this and seeing not only it being active but seeing people in voice channels in pairs knowing that y'all were doing scrims in pairs yeah and it it was really cool, really cool just to see everything. Yeah, and Horse, you kind of beat me to it. Uh, seeing the players get excited, and I, I feel like the viewers tend to uh, have given us good feedback here. If you have any feedback, please send it our way, because 
seeing this type of excitement for it makes myself, and I'm sure Horse Thief as well here, uh, and even Jeebus, uh, want to put things like this together again. Well, so if if you have feedback, if you're if you loved it, or, or you know, even if there's uh, details, things you wanted to see that were you know we could do differently, uh, please let us know. There's something uh, I think. I was just going to say, oh. there's something, Tim, Tim, Tim's a turd who's been in chat the whole time, who's been, you know, organizing in the background the whole time, uh, really came to Yuck and I to, to get this thing off the ground in the first place. And Tim in chat is saying, can I say Fire Oak and I are coming up with a possible weekly concept based SBB thing that coincides with the Super Brawl. So similar sort of format idea. And if I can't, what what I? Sorry, the chat moved. And if I can't say that teaser, I take it back. We may need some local community involvement. So it provided that this was fun for all involved. It sounds like there might be an appetite to do more of this. Were you going to add something, Click? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I Well, Horsey, I actually already said it before I was able to say anything. Like, I think it'd be interesting to see more different types of formats in the future just to keep things interesting and spicy and keep the creative juices flowing for you know all the guys participating in the tournament and it makes it more enjoyable to watch too seeing all these different things happening in the tournaments i like duke saying this format was fun i'd love to do it again adding the communal aspect to games make the games way more fun and satisfying to win not just for yourself but for your team yeah it, it's kind of cool actually that i wouldn't have, i wouldn't have thought of that not having played but it's got to feel better as a team when you win too like you get to share it with somebody yeah, give some virtual high fives. Trestus was calling for a virtual Gatorade bath for you, Click. <laughs> you know, perhaps we could have a 33 team, like three players per team, SVB 99. Right. Nine, <laughs> nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get them all in one lobby at the same time, maybe? Oh, all yeah. Right. All one lobby yeah. somehow. And then it's just <laughs> literal Royal Rumble. <laughs> uh,. Okay, well, I'll, I'll show up to cast. I'm not trying to organize that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. I think I think it's probably time to wrap. I, I don't think there's much else for us to do here today, except I did just really big thanks. Uh, Click, you got any last words? Uh, thank you all. You guys are all awesome. I love you all. Not only you guys, everybody in chat, the entire community. This This community is like a second family to me. Right back at you. Well said. Jeebus, anything you uh, feel like adding to this one? Well, I thought it was a really cool format. Um, it might be fun to get audio sometimes from, uh, yeah. from the players. It might be a little chaotic, you know, because the turns aren't very long, but uh, that might be something. There's there's ways that we can, that we can play around with this in the future, but I, I think it was really cool, you know, being able to jump around and see some different perspectives was a really unique uh, way to look at the game as well. It, there were so many you know, polywoggles and just like softballs into EXP and things like that, that, you know, you, you would miss um, if without having that extra visual on it. So, you know, you can spectate, you know, speculate that that's happening, but being able to actually see it and you're like, okay, well, then they, they ran a bunch of low health units that could guarantee a slay if they won that 50 50 kind of thing uh, was, you know, really cool to see. Absolutely. Well, I personally will be looking at feedback. I've seen some communications and whatnot going on, but I, I, I love this. I had a great time. I'm, I'm absolutely curious about the community engagement that we've seen and, and some of the let's do this again type conversation we're seeing. So just thanks. Thanks, Jeebus. Thanks, Yuck. Thank, Click. Thank, thanks, everybody who played. Thank you, everybody who watched. I, that's, that's what I got. I, I just wanted to say thanks. Yuck, what you got? I'm basically just going to echo what everybody else said. Uh, love the community. Thanks, everybody, for being involved. Um, you know, special shout out to uh, Jeebus um, for joining us here. Um, Horse Eve, always a pleasure. Uh, to, if you're looking for more information, we'll toss around some ideas, see what we can come up with for future events. Um, you know, stay tuned. You can get that information, I'm sure, a number of places. My stream, Horse Thief stream, um, you know, Jeebus stream. Clex stream uh, anywhere. <laughs> like if you're involved in the community, which a lot of people uh, are pretty active, stay tuned for more information. We'll see what we can come up with. Have some fun. Uh, and one last thing, let's not forget. You already mentioned it, Horace, but special shout out to Tim, uh, who's a member of the community uh, and really got the ball rolling on this. A asked for us to do something, got us 
you know, tossing some ideas around, which led us here to today. So special shout out to Tim, but uh, appreciate everybody hanging out today. Well, now, you know, a lot of times when we finish one of these, I just go straight to end screen, which is what I was going to do right now. But I guess we might as well raid since we're here on my channel. I see Atsukuya in the streaming right now. Maybe I should send us it. all that direction. Sounds good to me. I don't know if Atsukuyan's planning on playing more SBB, but, uh, you know, if we all end up over there and then Atsukuyan redirects us, I got no qualms with that. All right, well, raid is kicked off. I think I'm just going to send it. Thanks, guys. Bye. Yep. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I saw Jeebus and Yuck on screen. I forgot you were still. <laughs> Later, guys.